Hello, hello. I keep forgetting to take my breath before I transition. Hello, hello, it is I, Cheese Louise. And today, we're playing the spookiest game of them all. Except, we probably won't get to the spooky part today. Or on Sunday. And it, people who don't know Higurashi will just not understand why I was playing it for Halloween. <laughs> That's okay. How are you doing, chat? This screen, this screen that I'm on, it's it's so I'm supposed to be able to talk to chat at the beginning. Uh, here's your chance. Tell me, yeah, tell me how your day is, chat. Before I start reading visual novel for the next several hours. <laughs> chat. That's okay. Well, let's just move on over. Moving on up. Boop, boop, boop. Moving on up. Boop, 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 boop. You know, I've been thinking. I'm I'm probably going to remove my my format of having the, the game name up there and the ESRB rating. Because, um, yeah. People should kind of have an idea of what game they're watching. I don't know. I don't know. Seventh expansion. Higurashi. Oh, seventh expansion is the name of the producer? I don't know. Anyway, let's continue. Nothing bad has happened yet. <clears throat> Although the prologue was pretty ominous. Hmm. <clears throat> a Colonel Sanders? Oh god, I don't remember anyone's voices. Ah, of course, that's right up her alley. I understand her wanting to take home Satoko and Rika-chan. But I can't understand the Colonel Sanders. What's so good about that four-eyed geezer? Says the geezer. Oh, gosh dang it, that second line was me, MC Kun. Probably better to hear from Reina, don't you think? She'd probably just say, because it's just so cute, though. Yo, I saw an advertisement for the Reina Nendoroid <laughs> the other day. Let's just say that, what was it, three out of the four faces are, are very mid-horror scene. <laughs> she only has one, like, normal face, and it's like her pion face, you know. Does Reina often go to the construction site to hunt for treasure? Every now and then, every now and then she says she's going to have a look. But a girl her age rummaging around in the garbage is, well... Or, that was me. But a girl her age rummaging around in the garbage is, well... If Reina enjoys it, then I think it's fine. What were they doing over there? Damn construction? It's been bugging me since yesterday, like an itch I couldn't scratch. I got an itch, an itch I can't scratch. It's way to do down, to down on my back. Been itching and scratching all night and day. Gotta find, find a way, make it go away. Sorry, no one knows that song. I only know it because of a Sonic fan animation video. Anyway, itch I can't scratch. I'll do that song in karaoke someday. <laughs> it was cancelled a long time ago. Everyone gathered around and fought against it. Hearing an ominous word like fought come from Rika-chan's mouth startled me. That's right. It was unbelievable. They said Hinamizawa would be sunk into the reservoir and we had no say in the matter. So I'm only able to be here because the protest succeeded. Okay. Gosh dang. <laughs> I don't know if that was supposed to be scary, but with my headphones on, that it sounded like a door was opening behind me. And I was like, what? What's going on around here? <laughs> uh, 
I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't keep you, did I? My deepest apologies, Keiichi san. It took me a while to powder my nose. Satoko. Waiting to use the cannon until you really have to go. Or wait to use the It's a lot easier since it shoots right out. Wow. Okay. <laughs> it, how dare you speak to me in that way to a ma maiden of unparalleled beauty such as myself! <coughs> Sorry, I got the scratchies in my throat. Who's she calling a maiden? If Satoko really was a maiden, she wouldn't have reacted like that. Gosh dang it. The usual hijinks ensued. Yay! Now then, gentlemen, in accordance with the rules of our society, I bring a point to discussion. He, Keiichi Meibara-kun, wishes to be included as a member in our activities. What say you? Should we let him join our cult of violence? Reina has no objection. Sorry, I had to cough really hard. Oh, ho, 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 ho. I wonder if the likes of this peasant is up to the task. Me and Satoko both approve. The three that Mion had queried voices. The three that Mion had queried voiced their approval. That was a weird sentence. A unanimous decision. Congratulations, Keiichi Maibara kun. Maibara. I present you the honor of being allowed to take it the entrance the entrance exam for our club. Start from the beginning. I didn't say I would join. What club is this? What our club does, you see, in order to cope with our complicated society, we perform various activities under different sets of rules. What a vague thing to say. <laughs> sometimes they are in your favor, and sometimes they work against you. I'm pretty weak, so I prefer if you didn't single me out. Let's try to get along. You're so naive, Reyna. The law of the jungle is survival of the fittest. This was starting to sound a bit sketchy. So what kind of club was it? To sum it up, it's a club where we play games together. Riku chan was the only one to answer my question with a pertinent response. So basically this club put Mion's hobby of collecting games to use. By playing the various games that Mion had hoarded every day. It seemed that, depending on the day, there were prizes for the winner or a penalty for the person who finished in last place. Oh my god, so many people are live streaming today. <laughs> I keep seeing little now live notifications pop up on my stream monitor. <laughs> I make this clear right now. We aren't playing house here. You should treat each win or loss as if your life depends on it, all right? What's wrong with just having fun? Don't make it sound so crazy. Ooh, that's a face. <laughs> the first rule of our society. Aim only for first place. Going at it half-ass just because it's a game is not allowed. Rule number two of our society. For that reason, you are obliged to make all possible efforts. The way Satoko said it sounded as if she was saying, use any means necessary. It is what she said, pretty much. Of course, I will do my best, too. I'm pretty weak, but I'm trying my best. Stop saying you're weak. I won't think you're weak when you're stabbing me. Okay? Wait. Mic check, mic check. Okay. <laughs> sometimes, I got, sometimes I gotta make sure that the audio's working. Uh, triple check, though. Uh, triple check, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wah. 
I knew that I knew what they were trying to say. Oh, I have clicked away. In a game where everybody is aiming for the top, it's rather unsportsmanlike to play just for fun. Is it? It's unsportsmanlike to not be a tryhard? Alright, then I too will go all out! With that, I was finally ready for the rite of initiation, my baptism into the club. I don't think this is where it's gonna get horror-y. A word of warning, Kei-chan. Rainy can get pretty nasty. This initiation looks like it's going to be rough. Beyond began fishing around in the student lockers in the back of the room. They have the games here at the school? Well, it's club equipment, so I guess that's fine. Complicated games would put K-Chan at a disadvantage. So today we'll play a game that you should be familiar with. How about a standard card game like Old Bachelor? Well, that was a sound effect. Why is the text shaking? All right, let's do this. I don't know what Old Bachelor is. Is that Old Maid? Can't really get into it unless there's a penalty. This time the loser will be sentenced to having their face drawn on. What do you think? Well, well, it won't be oil-based paint, right? Right? Oil-based face painting with oil-based paint? That's perfect! Sotoko cheered the idea on. She didn't even flinch at the thought of such a severe penalty. It seemed like she was raring to go. If it's going to be like this, then I can't lose either! Then I'll just cut the deck and start dealing! The bachelor's pretty much the same as Old Maid. There's only one difference, there's no choker. In its place, one card is pulled out at the start. So you don't know what the old maid is? <laughs> That's pretty funny, actually. Meaning there'll be one card without a match left over at the end. You don't know which card will end up being the Joker. It's a pretty thrilling game. I'll take out the card now. Reyna took out one card and left it face down on the table. Every... <laughs> What's this music? Everybody stared at the card intently. Well, it'd be pretty obvious in the end game. No way to tell at the start. But the rest of them were very serious. They didn't seem as relaxed as I was. They compared their cards to the one face down, all the while gauging each other's reactions. It was as if they could see what the face down card was. No, it couldn't be. This deck was pretty worn out. No way. Can everyone tell by the scratch? By the scratches what the card on the table is? Remember the second rule of our society. Katie chan must try his hardest to win as well. A number of cards are quite unique, Katie kun Katie kun should be able to remember them pretty quickly. You said that so matter-of-factly. Suits me fine. Don't think that a little thing like that can be your crutch. I lashed out angrily, but it was rather obvious I was at a disadvantage. After all, they'd gone so far as to memorize the wear and tear of each individual card. This wasn't a simple game of Old Bachelor. If this was a test, then they were playing with the answer sheet in front of them! That's cheating, isn't it? Bring it! I'll take advantage of your carelessness and beat you at your own game! Baseless confidence would soon be crushed. Kick, kick, kick. How would I tell you your hand starting from the right? Three, four, nine, jack, queen. What? By the way, the bachelor is the jack of diamonds. Yeah, wait, that's helpful. I can tell what they are, even if you switch them around. I'm out! Ugh! I thought I was prepared, but for this- for it to be this brutal, just overwhelming. To demons- you're all demons! Reyna, 
isn't a demon, are you? S Sorry, Kate, you couldn't. This is the three of hearts, isn't it? I'm out. Wah! <laughs> Not even a hint of mercy. Reina, even Rika-chan. These club activities are, weren't to be trifled with. An alumnus of the club would definitely s survive in the cruelest of situations. If our entire class had self-detonating collars strapped to their necks and were dropped into a deathmatch on a deserted island, these guys would probably take it, take to it like a fish to water. I can already picture the joy as they hunt down each of their classmates. All right. <laughs> It's a lowest point system. The order indicates the points. Whoever has the lowest point total wins. Since Keiichi can't finish last, he has five points. There's already a five mark down on my scoreboard. I think it's unfair to keiichi -kun if we don't use a new deck. It's fine, it's fine. Kei-chan is a man after all. But... He can turn the tables even if the odds are stacked against him, right? How can I... How can I score better on a test that you have the answer key for? The best I could possibly do if I was extremely lucky is tie you. It's fitting for a lowly peasant to scamper her home and soak their pillow in tears, don't you think? A petite hand laid itself on top of my head, which was trembling from uncontainable con frustration. It was Rika Chan's. Keep on fighting, yeah. Thanks to Rika Chan's words of encouragement, I was able to calm down. You need to be calm, especially when you're cornered. That's the power I could muster during this crisis. Think clearly, KG Maibara. Take your time and look at the cards carefully. It's just as Reina said. Each card has its own distinct markings that made them stand out. Memorizing them should be pretty simple. Think about what you can do in this situation. Try everything in your power to improve your chances of victory. Whoa! Great, Keiichi-kun! Just like that! I covered the uniquely marked cards with my hands or other cards, arranging them in such a way that they couldn't be seen. <clears throat> the one with the ripped corner should be the five. And I'm out. I couldn't let any of those precious hints slip by me. All information is a weapon. Then it was my turn. So Toko fanned out her cards for me. You see, I want the seven. Is this the one? Oh, I said that. I wonder about that. Oh no, wait. You won't know unless you take it. There's a bit of dismay in her expression. Like she doesn't want it taken. That kind of expression. Oh, wait. I can't tell who's talking ever. I won't let that momentary lapse slip by me. I know, it's this one! Got it! Seven of spades. A cheer of, oh, ring out. What is this? The seven should be the hardest one of all to tell apart. It wasn't from memorizing the markings. Those slight changes in their expressions as I was selecting the card were enough. Can't hide it from me, Kei-chan. This mark means it's the two of diamonds. What? She was startled by her own misread. Of course, everyone else was too. Well, it's rare that Mei-chan gets a card wrong. No! Kate Chen, could it be you? They tell them apart by different marks. That mark was a nail scratch. So I put it. I put a new one on it! Are you saying you disguise it as the Two of Diamonds? What an impressive show of wit! Kate, you landed a clean hit! Nope, Sound Compressor doesn't like that. 
Okay, that's better. <laughs> don't write, don't do it right on the microphone, you silly. That's great, Kate. You can. That was an incredible match, you know. You know. Having defeated the forerunner me on my brilliant battle left me ecstatic. But by total points, it was already set in stone that Mion would win and I would finish last. I laughed haughtily, selecting the tone of my voice carefully to get on Mion's nerves. Well, I'm going to end up the loser, but I'm satisfied with one-upping Mion at the end. <laughs> that should be the proverbial slap in the face to Mion, who was at the top already and ensured victory. Even if Kei-chan gets first place this round, he'll still be end up last overall. Don't you hate that? Of course I do! Let's have a duel. One chance. If you win, then we'll swap first and last place. How about it? You up for it? She fell for it. A chance for an upset that wouldn't be possible without goading her into it. One chance, you say? Let me hear the rules. Mion discarded two cards from her hand and replaced... One with the Joker card that was on the back. It was on the table, then shuffled the resulting hand behind her back. The card in my right or the card in my left? If KT Ken can guess which hand the Joker's in, then he wins. She's cheating, neither of them have it. When you turned around just now, you didn't pull out the Joker, did you? You didn't pull out the Joker, did you? If you lose, I'll show the card in the other hand. That okay? The other three gulped nervously at this unexpected turn of events. Alright. You've got it! Beyond grasped one card in each hand and thrust them out at me. First, I need to inspect them closely. The card on the right had no distinguishing marks. I couldn't tell which one it was. Which one? I wonder. Can't you couldn't be careful? Yeah, of course, this is my chance for a big comeback. Now's your chance to be a big shot. Be a big, be a big, be a big shot. Looking closely at the card on the left, I saw a little wear. It was, wasn't one I hadn't seen, hadn't seen before. Ah, that card is... I didn't let that bit from Satoko slip by me. Me on clucked her tongue. I didn't recognize the mark on the left card from the small number that I had memorized. I didn't know what the left card was, but I could tell from Satoko's reaction that the card had already appeared during the game. Since it had already appeared before, it meant that it definitely wasn't the Joker. That's what she wants you to think! Is my hat too big? I can make it a little smaller. Eh, it seems too small though. Oh well. Oh well. I mean, they don't call it a 10 gallon hat for nothing. Malay. Oh? Keishan thinks it's the one on the right. Will you choose that one then? Will you? Left card definitely wasn't a joker. If I could trust that theory, then I should have been able to declare that the card on the right was the joker. And without Mion's taunting, the one on the right was the most suspicious. But wasn't it a bit too rushed to decide based solely on Satoko's reaction? More carefully. Ah! I remember now. That marked the left card, no doubt about it. The Seven of Clubs! Hmm. It's the Seven of Clubs, I see. I've won! The card on the left was the Seven of Clubs. So that meant the card on the right was the Joker! And thus, before my hand touched the right card, I froze. <laughs> I would expect no less from you. There was a wave of murmurs amongst the onlookers at my sudden halt, right before I confirmed the right card was the Joker. Huh? What could Keiichi Fan po San possibly be saying? I mean, the left one is... Shh. Oh? What makes you so certain that the right one isn't the Joker, Kei-chan? 
Mion let loose an unexpected question. Everyone was baffled. I don't know what the card on the right could be, but I know the one on the left is the Seven of Clubs. Then, doesn't that leave the right one as the Joker? One of them has to be the Joker, right? Yeah. One of those is the Joker, right? Okay, she has good intuition. Huh? Pikachu, chan what do you mean by... So basically, the Seven of Clubs, I discarded that by matching it with Satoko Seven of Spades earlier. Everyone's attention snapped to the discard pile at the same time. Truth of the matter could be discerned from that sloppy pile. So that means... Mion pocketed one of the discarded cards, then I'll line it over the left card. That means... I see, I get it. This left card is being disguised as the Seven of Clubs, right? It was the first time since the start of the match that the shadow ran across Mion's expression, and I didn't let that slip by. Then, with a grand flourish, I declared it loudly. <laughs> the Joker is the left one! It was an intense moment. That one second felt like an eternity for everyone there. Breaking that silence, the first one to speak was Mion. Being the first president of this club, I've been witness to a variety of performances. Kei-chan, yours is the best. The best of the best of the best. That's probably the greatest compliment Mian could give. Mian accepted her defeat, dropping the cards from both hands. My comeback victory! Rika-chan placed her hand on my head and began petting it, congratulating me on my victory. Huh? Rika-chan is... Reina and Satoko... Uh, gaped at us as if they had seen a ghost. What is it, Reyna? It's not as if I cheated or anything, right? This was fair and square. Rika, only pet someone on their head to console them. Huh? What's the meaning of... The moment, Reyna let out a small shriek. Ke keiichi -kun! This is how it was! You know, Kei-chan, I thought you'd read into it that far. <laughs> I outsmarted, you're outsmarting, outsmarting me. I outsmarted, you're outsmarting, 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 you, me, me, you, me, outsmarting, me, you, me. <laughs> Everyone froze. No, it was just me. It was a gamble. It was a gamble. If he had just jumped to conclusions like a little brat, then I would have lost. Was the answer everyone was certain about. Mion picked up the card from the losing hand. Okay, Chan, you know, you should take pride in this loss. She turned it around. That was the card that proclaimed the victory of this duel. The card under the seven of clubs. Unbelievable. It was the two of diamonds. It was a setup behind the setup. If I just picked the right one without reading so deeply into it. Is this trying to like teach me? Is that saying pick the obvious choice later, don't overthink it? <laughs> I, Mion Tonazaki, as the club president, do accept Keiichi Maibara's membership into our club. As I slumped to my knees, dazed, everyone let out a round of applause for the excellent effort I gave despite my defeat. The match is now over! Today's victor is me, Mion Sonazaki, and our exalted loser is Keiichi Meibara. Everyone made a commotion, applauding cheerfully. I felt I was bested, but I was so soundly beaten that it unexpectedly felt rather refreshing. When Mi-chan pulled that little trick behind her, that got I got excited thinking she's going to do it again! When Keiichi and stopped for the moment before touching the correct card, I thought he fell for it. He fell for it quite handily. Huh? Hey, wait. All of them knew from the start and still got so excited so earnestly? Everyone got excited to make it more fun. 
You. You're all demons, you monsters. They are a little bit psychopathic, aren't they? Now then, Kei-chan, it's time for your penalty. Since it's your first day participating, I'll go easy, okay? It'd be a problem if you refused to come to school. The other three members held down my arms and shoulders firmly. Yan approached, licking her lips. Her right hand went to pull something out of her pocket. That's a felt-tip marker, and it's large and oil-based! Okay, here we go. She took the cap off the marker and brought it slowly up to my face while I was immobilized. No, no, no! I let out my death throes. Okay. This scene was kind of entertaining. I kind of think it lasted a little too long, though. ding a ding a dong dong As soon as the club activities were finished, Raina flew off. Probably so she could dig out that cute Colonel Sanders that she wasn't able to take home yesterday. So today it was just me on and me walking home together. A rather rare occurrence. A mountain of treasure, huh? The guys throwing it away probably never thought in their wildest dreams that Raina would be grateful to them. Mountain of treasure, meaning that damn construction site from before. Alright, Mion would probably tell me. That murder by dismemberment that seemed to have happened there. Over there, you know at that damn construction site? Did something happen there? Long ago? Something sure did. A grand battle. There were sit-ins and demonstrations. It was a bit different than what I wanted to hear, but I decided I'd listen just, just the same. It was our land that was going to be sunk into the damn reservoir. I would have fought as well, probably. Government guys are really adamant about it. Acting all big and full of themselves. Since they figured out that they could, couldn't settle it with money, they did a bunch of nasty stuff. They were nasty guys. Mion spoke excitedly, as if the whole thing was happening right in front of her. I'm amazed you guys won. You're facing the federal government, right? The mayor and prominent figures in the village all signed petitions. They went to Tokyo and struck deals with legislators. And as a result, the development plan was re retracted. It was our complete victory! <laughs> There wasn't any violence, was there? Like assaults or murders? None. She promptly cut me off. Same as Raina had. Her words signaled the end of discussion. Tomitaki-san said one arm wasn't found in the incident. I thought that murder by dismemberment had occurred, but I guess I was wrong. My curiosity unsated, I sighed dejectedly inside. Later, see you tomorrow. Kei Chen, you can't wash that off until you get home, got it? I got it, I won't. Beyond held back her laughter while stealing glasses at my face. I wonder what kind of nasty doodles they drew. Well, you know. The same drawing that all immature children draw. I'm not talking about the cool S. Darn you, Mion. You shall rue this day. If our roles are ever reversed, I'm going to slop it on. Gross. All over your face so you won't be able to take it off. With even a scouring pad. Upon arriving home, I ran straight into my mom and embarrassing myself yet again. How do you know you're embarrassed, though? You don't even know what it is. The mood I'd come home to was already on edge. 
It's not an uncommon thing in our family. Whenever Dad can come up with a good idea, it always ends up like this. He stomps around the house with his arms crossed. Mom whispered into my ear. Welcome home, Keiichi. Dad, he's in a bit of a rut right now, so don't bother him, okay? You can't come up with a new idea? It's because the deadlines are so close together this time. Your dad needs time to recharge or he doesn't work as well. Dad's paintings feed our entire family. If he runs out of ideas, then it's the end of the Maybaras. We've never gone hungry before. Could it be that my dad is a master painter? Wouldn't it be easier to get an idea uh, taking a walk outside rather than wandering around the house? The theme of the piece this time is in the household. So it seems your dad wants to use this house as a motif. That's quite a bothersome motif. Keiichi, pick up your room. It looks terrible. So sorry, I'll clean it up later. Come on, please don't use my room as the motif. KG, there's still some time before dinner, so please go take a walk out back or something. His mood is only temporary. As soon as he gets an idea, his mood improves and he starts humming. Until then, it wouldn't be a bad idea to just go take a walk so I don't aggravate him further. Well, I guess I will then. I said I was going to take a walk, but I didn't have any particular destination in mind. I just needed to kill some time. I got on my bike and pondered where to go. I could just go read at the bookstore, but it would take about an hour by bike to get to town. It would be dark by the time I got back, so I didn't want to go unless I had to. The roads at night here in Hinamizawa creep me out. Oh, well, I'm sure we'll see that later. If Mion or Sotoko ever found out about that, I smiled wryly. Oh yeah, Rain was probably still at the Mountain of Treasure, the dam construction site. The excavation of Colonel Sanders was probably taking her a while. It wouldn't be so bad to have her owe me one. She might return the favor next time we have club activities. With a little bit of self-interest in mind, I set off toward the dam construction site. Hang on, I'm gonna go spit up my gum real quick. Set you mode! You didn't hear that. <laughs> Tomitaki-san might be there as well. The only person with information about the incident that both Reina and Mion denied knowing anything about. If I met him again, I'd like to ask for more details. I definitely noticed that Reina didn't even acknowledge Tomitaki's existence. So I'm not sure how real he is. Was there really a dismemberment here in Hinamizawa? That was my real intention. Or maybe Higurashi Town is like... Maybe it's like Silent Hill or something. And like, the town isn't even real. I spotted Reina str struggling up on the slope of the garbage pile. It looked like Colonel Sanders was lodged in there pretty firmly. It didn't look like Reina would be able to excavate him by herself. Realizing that Tomitaki-san wasn't around, I began climbing up the slope unsteadily. Hey, Reina! Looks like you're working up a sweat. Whoa, whoa, Keiichi-kun! What brings you to a place like this? A place like this, huh? I see she was aware of it at 
she was aware of it at least. I received a signal for emergency assistance at the accident site. Where's the injured party? Huh? Huh? Accident? Huh? But there's a report of Colonel S There's a report Colonel Sanders was buried alive in the trash pile. Huh? Oh, oh that. Oh, you scared me. Don't frighten me like that, Kate. You could. I was just kidding. I thought you might be struggling by yourself, so I came to help you out. Eh? You came for me? How? <laughs> well, I've filled my quota for today. If I don't see you rain on blush at least once a day, then I'm not getting my daily required nutritional intake. Just kidding, you're embarrassing me now. Just kidding, you're embarrassing me now. So, huh? What part was the joke? What, what part was it? I just ignored her bewilderment. Okay, now move out of the way. So where is Colonel Sanders? Ah, sorry. Can't you see him in that gap? He's really buried in there. The Colonel Sanders was sideways, surrounded by bores and other construction materials, like they were caging him inside. According to Reyna, it wasn't like this yesterday. It seems as though another illegal dumper came yesterday, dumped again, and now he's buried. Now he's buried like this. Now he's buried. Now he's buried like this. <laughs> Denunciation! Trying to move this pile all by yourself? With those scrawny arms? There's no way you should be able to do that with their slender arms. That's the one. That's the one not murdery face that she that her Nendoroid has. But Colonel Sanders is so cute. There's a chain on the Colonel Sanders at the store. This one though. I should be able to take this one home. How? If Raina gave up on this Colonel Sanders, she'll probably start devising a plan to steal the one in front of the store. As Raina's guardian, I won't allow her to sully her hands with crime. Out of the way, I'll do it. Raina blushed again, but this time I left it alone. The pile was enormous. Also, the more days we wasted, the more likely another illegal dumping would occur. If we got buried any deeper, there would be nothing that could be done. Kichikun, I'll help too. Let me help. You just get in the way, so stay back. <laughs> ah, jeez. Stop doing that. Stop making me think that things are falling. <laughs> Pulling out scrapes, bending them, tossing them aside. I quickly became... <sighs> oh, covered in sweat and dust. Flying objects drew beautiful arcs across the twilight sky, one after another. Lumber, timber, plywood. Dang it! No matter how much I threw out, there was still more! Even though I could see Colonel Sanders right there. After Grand standing like that in front of Reyna, I felt frantic because of how little I had progressed. Hmm? Audio scuff? Weird. If I was going to do this seriously, I'd need an axe or saw or something. Yeah, maybe don't bring those. That's enough, Kate. You can. <clears throat> You're so sweaty. You don't have to try so hard. I'm just doing it for you, Reyna. Don't worry about it. Reyna began began sputtering and turned beet red. I whoops. I meant to say I was trying my best so as to keep her from becoming a criminal. Oh well. I guess I just need a break. This is pretty tough. I sprawled on my back over the grassy slope. I'm so sorry. You're covered in sweat. Raina patted her handkerchief against my forehead. It felt pretty nice. 
Um, we'll wait here a minute, okay? My house is pretty close. I'll bring you some barley tea, okay? Leaving the handkerchief on my forehead, Rena took off running. The cries of the Higurashi gently cooled the air. After I was certain that Reina was gone, I picked myself up and headed towards what I discovered earlier. There was a garbage pile of magazines and newspapers bound up in twine. Unless I'm mistaken, I believe it was around here. There it was. There were bound stacks of not so, reput not so reputable tabloids. They were stacked chronologically, going back quite a few years. It was quite a disturbing incident. It seems they haven't been able to find one of the arms you see. If it was just as Tomitaki-san said, then undoubtedly there would be mention of the murder. These are, these are troubled times. There's no end to these sickening incidents. Well, there's a large part of society drawn in by these incidents as well. So it had to be recorded. Somewhere. I unfastened the packages and opened the rain-soaked pages carefully, looking over the table of contents. Not here. Next one. Not here. Next one. It was hard to search since I didn't know when it happened. I didn't know who the perpetrator or the victim was either. I only knew it had happened here. I looked up every so often, checking to see if Reyna had come back or not. I wouldn't want her to see me gawking at a dirty magazine, but it wasn't just that. Both Reyna and Mion said they didn't know, but it had happened without a doubt. As long as Tomitake-san wasn't lying, then if both Reina and Mion... Ah, oh, yeah, there it was. If they just said that... Or, ah, oh, yeah, there was. If they just said that, then I wouldn't have gotten so hung up on it. An incident that neither Reina nor Mion wished to talk about. Trying to uncover it after they tried to conceal it out of good intentions? That made me feel like I was acting, acting against my friends. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Okay. Alright, the little, little, little toy piano. That sent a chill up my spine. I take a drink. I hydrate. For fear of dihydrate. Kinamizawa Dam worker lynching murder by dismemberment. Here it is. The featured article was in the back, and it seemed that there was a photograph in the colored pages at the front. The pages of the featured article were stuck together and weren't easy to open. Raina could return at any moment. Boy, he really knows something's up, huh? He's really like, oh god, I can't let anyone discover me learning the truth. <laughs> I'll die. Oh, wow. Sorry, I'm messing with my hat. <laughs> Feeling rushed, I gave up and opened the photograph page. The police investigators were carrying a body bag, and newspaper reporters were all bathing it in camera flashes. The image was blurry and hard to understand, but I could definitely make out the headlines. A tragic nightmare at the Hanamizawa construction site, lynching and murder slash dismemberment. The victim was the site foreman. He had assaulted his assailant, Staley, with an explosive backlash from his daily actions? It's a hor horrible image to see the site foreman as. It happened. It really did happen. It seemed the details were on the next page. I turned the, p I turned the page without pausing. On it was... <clears throat> the assailant butchered the victim's body with hatchets and pickaxes, then used an axe to split the cadaver into six pieces, the head, arms, legs, and torso. I could understand just from the headline that it was just too terrible an incident. Normally a lynching is just assault and murder, right? 
Disarmament with hatchets and pickaxes? That wasn't a lynching. It was a merciless killing to the letter, a brutal murder. Done by a group of people. With hatchets. With pickaxes. With an axe. Oh. Ah! Ah! It's, it's Raina. She changed her clothes. She, she's, she's got her murder clothes on. Eek! So, so sorry. Did I startle you? Did I startle you? Raina dropped the axe she was holding onto the grass after being startled by my voice. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Keiji Kun, you see, earlier, yeah, uh, you, you said it would help if you had an axe, didn't you? So then, I brought an axe for you from the sh shed. Raina fluttered her arms in a panic, continuing to explain and apologize. It seemed I'd been glaring at her pretty intensely. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I, I guess my reaction was a bit overboard. No, no, no. I'm sorry as well. Uh, I'm sorry. Night was drawing so... Night was drawing close. I was pretty worn out. And it wouldn't hurt to do the rest tomorrow. Uh, it doesn't look like we can break that last beam without an axe. Uh, you brought it after all. I'll have to borrow it tomorrow, alright? Okay. Why do you look so glum? Tomorrow we'll be, we'll be digging out Colonel Sanders, right? You're right! <laughs> I really want to take Colonel Sanders home soon. What, is there like an old skeleton inside of it? Huh? When you were past victims? Reyna, I'm on to you. We both knew that it was useless to apologize any more than that. I quenched my thirst with the barley tea Reyna brought and wiped off the sweat that had now gone cold. We took the path to head home. I felt quite guilty about the tabloid wrapped up in my jacket. Why? There's no reason to feel guilty. I'm sorry, I was reading an old newspaper. They received new tips. The Hammonds Dam Project Special Tabloid Report. All right. View new tips. One Man's Truth. I just got an achievement. October 1975. In accordance with the Prime Minister's Bulletin number XXX, Kena Mizawa's Electrical Development Master Plan was announced. The vast scope of the projected Hina Mizawa Dam will have an incredibly heavy impact on the village of Hinamizawa. The flooded area caused by Hinamizawa Dam would include five areas of Hinamizawa. Takatsudo, Kiyotsu, Matsumoto, and Yagochi. The submerged area include 291 houses, population 1,251, one elementary school, one middle school, one post office. One agricultural cooperative, one forestry department lumberyard, five shrines, two temples, and one fishery. And <clears throat> all these communal, cultural, agricultural areas and places of worship will be indefinitely submerged at the bottom of the artificial lake basin. You know, there's probably a reason they're trying to flood the city Pry trying to bury evil or something forsaking the hundreds of years our ancestors poured their blood and sweat into this fertile resource rich land is just too painful to bear all the residents having homes that were to be submerged banded together and created the Onigafuchi Defense Alliance the down project was halted and petitions to alter the plan were circulated the citizens sought peaceful negotiations, but the government and its puppet company, so-and-so, openly refused. Performing unspeakable heinous acts, they quashed the democratic actions of the villagers. 
but the villagers did not falter. Instead, they banded together even more closely and steeled their resolve to protect their homes to the death. To the death? Jeez. The continuation of that frightening Hinamizawa Dam construction project is still stalled as of today. Villagers understand that the stalling was caused by sublime power through unity. And they understand that this fearsome plan has not yet been fully withdrawn. The Onigafuchi Defense Alliance has been dissolved after it did its part, but the feelings of unity it garnered have not yet been extinguished. As long as that passion resides in the hearts of the residents, they'll be able to confront whomever next decides to sink their homes into a lake basin. Onigafuchi Defense Alliance Committee Chairman Kichiro Kimiyoshi Okay. Nightmare befalls the Hinamizawa Dam. Lynching and murder such dismemberment. An X month of X day in XX Prefecture at the Hinamizawa Dam construction work site in the Shishibone City. A bone chillingly gruesome murder such dismemberment. Even though this case has shocked the archipelago, the police will give no details on the case. Exactly what happened at the Hinamizawa Dam? They probably didn't mean to kill him at first. But, as the victim resisted by sw swinging around a shovel, the rest of the perpetrators armed themselves in return, and it quickly escalated to homicide. So said the aforementioned investigator A. After this bloody tragedy was over, they were left with a body which nobody thought was alive. XXN had tormented the suspects daily with his rough behavior. At first, it was meant to be payback. All the perpetrators were horrified by their deed, and one even turned himself into the police. It was the de facto leader of the group, XX, who suggested hiding the body. Reluctant reluctantly at first, they soon began to think they did not wish to be caught. The construction site had numerous places to hide the body with six people. They were originally supposed to hide the body and leave the area. But the de facto leader feared that the consci consciences of the other five wouldn't be able to bear the burden, and came up with a horrifying method to keep them from turning him into the police. He devised a heinous method of splitting up the body among them and making each of them responsible for hiding a piece. What the hell? XX had turned a simple manslaughter into a gruesome dismemberment and forced, forcibly involved each perpetrator in order to create a sense of unity between them. Each one participated. What does this mean? Person A spoke out reluctantly. Uh, XX had ordered each and every one of them to dissect the piece, a piece for themselves. They were hesitant at first, but nobody refused. In for a penny, in for a pound, was what it meant. Thus an unimaginable bloody ceremony began. The perpetrators wept and vomited as they performed the gruesome task. There was one person who stubbornly refused, but XX threatened them, saying nothing would change if some, someone else ended up dead, and he gave up his objections. But XX's plan collapsed in the span of one night. So-and-so, who had refused to dissect the corpse up until the last moment, had broken down into tears at the hospital where he was being treated for an injury sustained during the scuffle and confessed. The criminals were arrested one after the other, but the de facto leader, so-and-so's whereabouts, are still unknown. Also, the right arm hidden by so-and-so has yet to be found. Despite an ongoing search, this horrible individual has so far managed to elude law enforcement. What could the police be doing? It appears that X and X had... <laughs> X and X? So-and-so had said he was going to throw the body right arm into the marsh. So-and-so's car was discovered abandoned near the marsh, but there were no clues to his whereabouts. 
Sozo didn't trust its companions. One cannot deny the possibility that he had expected his companions to confess to the police and used his car as a decoy. Of course, I doubt that, Fury. Since he has no car, one would expect him to have a limited area to which he could have escaped to. But within the station, there were rumors going around that he had accidentally slipped and drowned in the marsh when he went to throw away the body. To the locals, that marsh is believed to be bottomless. It's known as Onigafuchi, the Ogre's Abyss, and it's said that the bottom of the marsh is connected to the hellish world of demons. The atrocious demons from hell that was so-and-so. Could it be that he had returned to hell through the marsh? Why? Wow. <laughs> the Jin Dragon, bringer of luck and fortune, prosperous future, ladies leaping into your arms, business success, promotions, ambition, protection from harm, not just with pachinko and horse races, but business and even love. Guaranteed are your money back. Jin Dragon Bracelet DX One Piece. 27,800 yen. <laughs> Boing. <laughs> I, I appreciate this game's sense of humor. Uh, we'll go ahead and save, though. I don't know how many chapters chapter one is made of. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> I'm glad I am appreciating that they're they're creeping they're injecting the horror into the early parts, so it's not just you know, it's not just goofy loofy for like six hours and then suddenly it's horror. Like it, it, it's in there. It's in there. I mean, granted, I don't like horror, but horror is the point of Higurashi, so I'm glad they're not delaying it. It's the interesting part of Higurashi, you know. Although I guess I haven't finished it yet, so I can't say for sure what is and in and isn't the interesting part. The function of this school was as an educational facility as an educational facility is very questionable. Our PE class is exceptionally disorganized. The only things we do together are warm-ups at the start. The teacher isn't even there after that. All we do is play together. Um That's better. <laughs> Why is it clinging to her so hard? Is her shirt wet? <laughs> Gosh dang. No helping it. Everyone's a different age or gender. The only was that we... Alright, I'll change it back. It's, it's just weird. It's weird how sexual it is. Like, look how... Look how tight that clings to her. That doesn't make sense. Whatever. The only rule was... The only rule is that we have to stay on school grounds while exercising. All the little kids were gallivanting about. Well, they certainly are being active. They might be getting plenty of exercise, but... The Board of Education has probably completely... Probably completely forgot about this school. Ah, these two look fine. Sorry to keep you waiting. We're all together now. What shall we do today for PE? Alright. We have all our members gathered now. Now then, class representative, what shall we do for PE today? What shall we do? Miana harumphed and crossed her arms haughtily, surveying the area. Explosive power and endurance. There are no friends in the world of sports. Everyone is a rival. 
the only thing you can trust in is your own body. What the heck do you mean by that? You really read too much manga, you chuny B.O. I croaked without missing a beat. And so we'll be taking a lesson from history. The tried and true king of all outdoor melee events. Let's play tag! Tag sucks. I think I remember... I remember in elementary school... I would get really mad playing tag. I think I, I think I had anger issues when I was younger. But I would get mad if I couldn't catch anyone for a while. I've never been too much of a fast runner, so you know. I would get I would get frustrated and angry. But it doesn't matter because I, I couldn't hit anyone because I couldn't catch them. <laughs> uh. It was quite the adorable choice to make after playing it up so much. Just what I was hoping for. That Dunderhead Keiichi san shall be the first one to be it. I won't be beaten. Also, tag's pretty unfair to play among these kids who are like four years apart from each other. <laughs> or however far apart they are. They got small legs. They can't run. They can't run so good. Well, that's weird. My cursor's just like outside of the box. Oh. There. It can stay there. It's fine. <laughs> oh, I think it's... As soon as I move it completely off the window, it disappears. That's interesting. Window capture. Yeah. Huh. Weird. The immersion is broken. I'll try my best too. You can't be me. Are you guys also into it? The third rule of our society. You must partake in the game, enjoying it without question. Then this counts as a club activity? Everyone smirked at each other. They all seemed pretty confident. I'm a man. Physically, I should be able to keep up with any girls my own age. Regardless, Mion and Satoko looked like they were aiming for victory, and Reina was looking at me as if pitying my disadvantage. Fine. Tag. I'm in! My yell echoed across the school grounds. These were the rules. Anyone who was able to evade being tagged before the bell was a winner. But we didn't switch who was it. The ones who were tagged by it became it. So the number of people who were it would increase exponentially. The endgame would become a hellish siege. They call the version we're playing here zombie tag, you see. I see. Anyone infected by a zombie turns into a zombie. Why do you make it sound so scary, I wonder? I wonder. As soon as I catch Reina, I'm going to tear out her entrails while she's still alive. K -k gross! Keiichi Kun, that's gross! And it'll be gross when you do it later, too. Rika Chan placed her hand on Reina's, Reina's head as she panicked. Don't worry, before Keiichi gobbles you down, I'll eat you up gently. Rika, that isn't comforting at all. Both Mion and I nodded deeply. So the first it. How do you decide who's the zombie? With rock, paper, scissors? Well, it is class time after all. Let's decide by answering questions. I'll ask the questions and the one who isn't able to answer is the zombie. I have no idea which grade level they're coming from. What does the Japanese word Roku mean? Oh. Huh? I was bewildered by the sudden question. Mian repeated it. So you need to answer. What's Roku in English? Um, it's six. Oh, duh, I should have known that. How about... 
Let's go to Sheena. Sucks. What's the third last letter in the alphabet? It's X. What does Saibetsu mean? Of course I know what that is. Say, say. Satoko cuts herself off before finishing the answer. I see. It's quite a lewd question. But is it? You're an adult, aren't you? Of course you know what it is, right? Uh, I certainly do. Of course I know. Then go ahead and say it. That, you know. That. What does that mean exactly? How? Oh, Satoko looks like she's in trouble. How cute! Don't take her home. It's a crime. If I didn't nip it in the butt, she really might have tried to take her home. Mion's pursuit was relentless, making Satoko stammer. Here's the thing, though. I'm pretty sure these girls are only going to murder me. I don't think they're going to murder each other. I don't know that for sure, though. Now then, go ahead and say it nice and loudly. What does that mean? I, I do know. I do know. Say. That means a person, thing, idea, action, or event which has been previously indicated in context. What? Huh? Ah. All of us were... That means a person, thing, idea, action, or event which has been previously indicated in context. All of us were a bit surprised by Rika Chan's unexpected answer. I see. Well, it certainly is what that means. That could have been awkward. I wonder what I would have done in Satoko's position. I'd probably get ticked off and just blurt out you know what at the top of my lungs. I wouldn't want you as an enemy, me on Sonazaki. Thank goodness you were born a girl. If you were a boy, you'd probably be a perverted douchebag. It appears I have no choice. Unfortunately, I, Satoko Hojo, shall assume the role of the zombie. I shall eat everyone! Seems like she's ready to go. Um, all I must do is catch 100, correct? Some jerks skip numbers while... Some jerks skip numbers while counting to 100. So you can start chasing after you solve this problem. Well, Keiji-kun, give her a simple one, okay? One-fifth of a cake, one-sixth of a cake, and one-seventh of a cake are all in one plate. Oh no! There are no common denominators! Satoko grabbed a stick in a panic and began drawing a cake in fractions on the ground. If Satoko, who can eat one cake in 60 seconds, eats all of them, how many cakes are left on the plate? Just as I finished giving the word problem, Mion shouted. Ready, go! That little scene just now actually reminds me. Uh, should I tell this story? I, I don't think I have on stream. It seems like the type of story I wouldn't tell. I don't know. But it's relevant, and the stream's ready to down, so I can say what I want. Um, <laughs> in high school, I remember, uh, during the sex ed uh, portion of, of one of the classes, because um, sex ed is always tied to, to P.E., so it, it's like gym, and then there's like a section of it during winter where you learn about stuff. But one day they decided to try to combine them. Um, so we, we went out on the field to play kickball. Um, but when you, before you kick the ball, before before the pitcher pitches the ball at you, you got, you got asked uh, like a vocab question. 
and and you had to you had to shout the answer so the teacher could hear you before you kicked the ball. <laughs> and I I just remember, you know, people are getting getting the innocuous ones like you know, um, ovulation, uh, vas deferens, stuff like that. <laughs> but my question, of course. I forget how the question was phrased, but it was basically, what is the opening uh, for a woman, <laughs> or that's not a good way to phrase it, but like, <laughs> so I had to shout, you know, before I kicked the ball, I had to shout, VAGINA! Which was the correct answer. Um, and I whipped it, and the teacher was like, alright, alright, that one was, that was awkward. Uh, give, give him another shot, that, that kick doesn't count. <laughs> you don't have to answer the question this time. <laughs> it was funny. Anyway. I'm me on signal, everyone, but Satoko scattered. Hehe, <laughs> Katie kun that wasn't a problem at all, was it? Yeah, the answer is zero. Satoko had already lost the moment she started working it out. She's in it all, so of course there'd be nothing much on the plate. Everyone dashed off in the direction they thought was best. Knowing the lay of the land, they probably headed right to the best spots. It was obvious I was at a disadvantage. At a time like this, it would have been more effective to go along with those those trained in survival skills, like Mion, for example. The fact that I didn't realize it started the game probably hurt my chances. Glancing back over the school grounds, I saw Satoko just rising up to the start. She was really, really mad. <laughs> she got tripped on, tripped up on such a dumb question. stood at one of the corners of the school. I had clear sightliness in two directions and would probably have a good response time if any zombies started closing in. For the time being, I caught my breath and focused on what I was trained to think during club activities yesterday. Now think calmly, Keiichi Maibara. If I was it, what would I do? Increasing my numbers would be the shortcut to victory. Then after the weakest player weakest play then going after the weakest player first is the obvious plan of attack meaning me now then where could Keiichi-san possibly be I shan't let you escape but of course what would be the best method to track me down footprints or smell or maybe some type of trail you think she smelled her way to you If I could craftily hide my tracks, there would be no trail for Satoko to follow. But as no detective, would I even be able to do that kind of thing in an amateur game like this? Tomita! Okamura! Have you seen Keiichi-san recently? What the heck? Do zombies hunt their prey by asking nicely where they went? Tomita-kun and Omar... Amura couldn't point to the location where I was hiding. After confirming she was heading in this direction, I abandoned my position. It wasn't easy to hide myself with all those little kids running around as they pleased. It was becoming even more obvious that I was at disadvantage from not being familiar with these surroundings. If that's how it was going to be, then to comfort this intelligence gathering zombie, I'd counter it, gush dang it. I'd counter it in a similar vein. I approached some girls with the ball. I'm sorry, but could you relay this message? Tell Satoko Hojo that her parents are at the gate, please. Message, message, <laughs> Okay, okay. I stopped the girls as they turned to run off. Wait, don't go yet. I'll just take this one to me on Sonazaki. Tell her the teacher called her to the gate. Mwahaha, <laughs> I'm quite the schemer if I do say so myself. If things went well, 
Then Satoko and Mion would run into each other at the gate. It would put me at a disadvantage if more people were it, but this was Mion we were talking about. She'd figure out a way to escape. But that was just fine. As long as it bought me more time. Mwahaha! <laughs> Dance for my Mion and Satoko. In the palm of my hand! Having my fill of playing the con man, I looked for a place to hide. If you think about it logically, I'd only bought myself a scant amount of time. And it might even come back to bite me. Once it became apparent I started spreading false information through the messengers, I couldn't end up being the recipient of one of those messages. So Tucker would probably ask the messengers to help her look for me. I mean, there would be more zombies than participants in the game! The virus that was brought about by my mischief could cause an epidemic. All my classmates would transform into zombies and would only be searching for me! This tactic. This tactic might backfire horribly. While trembling at the thought of the impending dawn of the dead, I began searching for a safe house. Hang on, I'm gonna grab a cough drop real quick. I found a shed by the incinerator behind the school. After climbing up to the roof, I held my breath. It wasn't a bad place to hold out. Not only did I have a good line of sight, but if necessary, I could jump off in three different directions to escape. It was getting rowdy down there. The lower grades were running around below the shed. Mebara-san isn't around. Mebara-san isn't around? Is he over there? Nope. Where's Keiichi-san, I wonder? His dad is at the front gate. That was definitely a lie. The word gate, the same one I'd used... <laughs> the same one I'd used gave me a, gave a hint of revenge. So Mion was behind this. I was still keeping one step ahead of the game. I felt bad for my underclassmen, but they'd have to search until the school bell. Hey, hey, do you know where Keiichi San is at? His mom suddenly got really sick. A message, a message for my Barasan. They said his house caught fire and he needs to come to the gate. Well, you guys are getting crazy. A jumbo jet fell on top of the Maybara residence. <laughs> the police have come to question him. Anything goes now, jeez. They say he enjoys peeping in the bathrooms. Huh? <laughs> Is it true that he's going around every night stealing panties? Who are they talking about? I heard he wears panties on his head and smells them and stuff. No way I would do that! I heard that class representative Mion was a victim too. What? Grog! This was your doing, Mion! Calm down, Keiichi Mebara. This is Mion's battle tactic to flush me out. Just hold on. My underclassmen thought about it logically. They would know it's all nonsense. The small kids don't think about things logically. They're dumb and stuff. To them, all those things were true, so they chuckled together while looking for me. Heh <laughs> I win, Mion. Oh no, don't lean into it. It's my victory! <laughs> Wiping unrelenting tears away, I felt intoxicated by my own victory. Did you hear? I heard that the new transfer student Mebara-san is a really perverted person. Yeah. The cost of beating me on I had too high a price. Ah. Oh, someone passed below. That's Reina and Rika-chan. Huh. Huh. Rika-chan, you're still okay? I'm getting by somehow. Huh. Huh. It, it seems me chan is it as well. Mion? It couldn't be. She become it because of my little strategy? This confirmed that Mion was behind this relentless message war. Then, 
this wasn't good. I finally got away from Ichan, but Satoko-chan, she's... Satoko is searching around the pipe, so we should be safe here for a while. Upon hearing that, I breathed a sigh of relief. While Reina was slumped on the ground, breathing heavily, Rika-chan had started creeping up to her. Rika-chan doesn't normally make noise when she walks, but it's strange. It couldn't be. Whoa! Rika-chan? What is it? What is it? Oh. Don't worry. I've never seen Rika-chan smile so creepily before. Oh, I had never seen Rika-chan smile so creepily before. Gosh dang it. That wasn't in the quotes. Well, why are you coming closer? Why? Rika-chan isn't a zombie, is she? Don't be scared. I'll be sure to eat you gently. No, 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 no way! <clears throat> Rika-chan, no! Eek! Reina was pressed against the wall and Rika-chan lurched forward with both arms out just like a zombie. Reina quaked with her back pushed up against the wall. It was quite a surreal scene of horror. Like one of those, those zombie breakout videos you'd see. At that moment, Reina's eyes met mine. Can't you come save me? Zombie Rika-chan turned 180 degrees, exorcist style, and glared at me. Found him! I see K-chan! Mion popped out from behind the cinder block wall around the garbage dump, also seeing where I was. My position was only advantageous. was it? My position was only advantageous. Uh, alright, that second one, or that second was is unnecessary, this one. Uh, just cross it out. Only advantageous when there was one zombie. Being surrounded was not as good. He said you located Keiichi-san? I could tell Satoko... Well, I could tell Satoko was rushing my way. It seemed that Rika-chan had let Reina escape, and now she was burying her fangs in my direction. Uh, oh. Come on down, Keiichi-san. The three zombies circled the shed, moaning curses. Y you guys are scary. Too scary. I wonder how Keiichi-san's guts taste. Oh, uh, well, you see, guts uh, usually taste bad. That's where that's where poop happens. That's where poop is created. Katie said, "I want you to come become one of us." Does someone please save me? I saw Rena apologizing me to me from across the schoolyard. An apology. Sorry, leaving me for dead. Rena. I left off the roof out of fear, slipping as I landed. Satoko and Rika jumped on top of me. After straddling me, they tickled me all over my body. <laughs> stop, stop. Stop. Hello, Cheese. Nice hat. Thank you. It's my Halloween costume. I'm a, I'm a cowboy. <laughs> How are you doing today, Leone? So, so this means Rain is still left. There isn't much time until the bell. Darn you, Reina! How dare you leave me for dead! The feelings of a zombie. I understood how vengeful ghosts with lingering regrets felt. Like Woody from Toy Story. Uh, yeah. I guess. <laughs> You good? Awesome, awesome. I am also doing well. It's sad. So sad. But Keiichi is one of us now. It felt like I had been bitten by a vampire and was now one of their thralls. It was a strange feeling being welcomed over to the side that had pursued me. Zombie tag is quite profound. This is no time to postulate. It was Capture Reina. 
The principal is walking down the hall. The bell will ring soon. To devour Reyna, I, who had been turned into a demon of vengeance, needed to use any means necessary. Ooh, what mode is that? Hungry Paimon. Get that Genshin out of here. Just kidding. Except I wasn't just a zombie. I was a master of the night. A vampire. That's actually an interesting thought. I wonder what came first. Zombies or vampires? As far as, like, mythos. What, what was created first? See, vampires were first a thing with the Count Dracula book, which was based on Vlad the Impaler. So there's a timeline of when vampires started. I wonder what the first work of fiction with zombies is. Using the same trick that had tightened the noose around my own neck, I used my classmates to further my evil designs. I gathered up the lower grades from around the school grounds. Everyone listen! Reyna's in big trouble! All of you please look for Reyna! It's a bigger problem than a jumbo jet crashing into your f Oh. It's a bigger problem than a jumbo jet crashing into your family's house? Oh yeah. It had turned into that, hadn't it? Mion wh whistled nonchalantly trying to avoid the blame. Yeah, it's not even the same league as jumbo jets! <laughs> What fell on Reyna's house was a space colony! What? A, a space colony? Yeah, it's a really big disaster. Everything in a hundred kilometer radius was obliterated. Wouldn't that include right here? That's only the prelude to this tragic tale. This is the beginning. Start of a war for independence by the prop propaganda... Well, excuse me. Propagandapality. Propagandapality. Alright, I'm not sure that's a word. Of Zeon! The lower grades were dumbfounded, their eyes like saucers at the grand turn of events. What, what will happen? Will the Terran Federation lose? If things go on like this, they will! Only one person can defeat the Red Comet. That person is Reina Ryugu! The lower grade students all gulped. I see. Why are we gaslighting the little kids <laughs> about so we can win a tag? <laughs> the lower grade students all gulped. It seemed I'd made them fully understand that the fight for Earth was lost without Reyna. Now scatter, comrades. We must find Reyna. My comrades in the lower grades let out an enthusiastic cheer and dashed off in various directions around the school grounds. Hmm? There's still one person who hadn't gone. But I thought even the Terran Federation's impulse wave defusal cannon didn't work on the Comet Empire. What are they talking about? You're close. That's the white variety of those comets. The reason it didn't work was because they didn't know the weak point. Of course, Reyna knows their weak points all too well. Your son is amazing! What's happening? Satisfied with that? He also rushed off to look for Reyna. It doesn't seem like there are... It does seem like there are some promising up-and-comers among the youngsters. Little K-chan's abilities. This old man knows them. This old man knows them better now. It didn't really feel like she was complimenting me, but whatever. Really, though. How exceptional, k san This looks quite promising. If we have this many, we can win! With this many, we will win! I was thinking that Keiichi would have been a better nominee for the initial zombie. Rika-chan's words stung a bit, but I let it slide for now. Not even Reyna would be able to escape the entire class. As a result of everyone's thorough search, Reyna was finally cornered in the back of the sports equipment shed. You're all scary! Cage, you can too! So scary! Oh, you'll get your revenge on us later, I'm sure. I 
It probably was scary being chased around by the entire student body. All the lower grades closed in on Reyna, saying she was the only one who could save the world. What are you all saying? I can't control a mech. Reyna, how could you leave me for dead? Are you ready to pay for it? Uh, I'm sorry about that, Keichi-kun, but, but I didn't have a choice. Do not resist. Let yourself be devoured. Let's all be together. Now, Reyna, say your prayers. <laughs> Reyna had stumbled onto a mat, trembling in t with tears in her eyes. I closed in. Associating the situation with a similar, particularly immoral one, made my pulse quicken just a little bit. Satoko and Rika-chan were both wiggling their fingers. They probably wanted to tickle Reina. Reina, wanting no part of what she knew was about to happen, went stiff with fear. Was she going to get saved by the bell? Keiji-kun, you wouldn't do mean things like everyone else, would you? Would you? Oh, I wonder. I'm a ghost, I guess. Uh, uh, how? Now then, are you ready? Okay, so long as it's Keiji-kun. The face she made as she resigned herself to her fate made my heart skip a beat. I believe that Keiji-kun won't do horrible things to me. A uh, body won't move. It had to be some sort of anti-zombie mantra. The second my sense of reason chimed in, the beast inside me died instantly. Yo! Beast? <laughs> there was the bell. Game over. Yay! I did it! I did it! She did get saved by the bell. I knew it. I survived! Yay! Yay! Star! Raina pranced around merrily as if the curse had been broken. Heh. <laughs> so daylight broke in the nick of time and the evil zombie army disintegrated into dust. Zombies don't disintegrate in sunlight. That's vampires. <laughs> and so the heroine survived. And that's how it goes in the... Well, that's how it goes in the movies, anyway. What are you postulating about? It's all because Keiichi san was dawdling about what you were all dawdling. Punishment is required. I was subdued by Satoko and Rika chan, and once again sentenced to death by 100 tickles. Eek! Forgive me! Eek! Then the award for surviving goes to Rena Ryugu and Mion Sonazaki. Yay! Huh? Mi chan wasn't a zombie? Only pretending to be one. They say you need to deceive your allies before you can deceive the enemy, you know. Oh, me on you little... Yeah, yeah. Hurry up and change, alright? Don't be late for the next class. Let go of me, Satoko. Rika-chan. I think I had my fill of being terrified to my very core by club activities. I solemnly swore I would have me on crying for, the, for mercy next time. You know, something tells me you don't know nothing about being terrified to your core yet, Keiichi. So are these scenes like gonna be like echoed later? Is it like poetry and it rhymes, except later it'll be horrible? After arriving home, I quickly made preparations to head out once again. I had agreed to meet with Reyna to dig Colonel Sanders out of the mountain of treasure from before. Mom, do we have work gloves? I need towels, too. Aren't they in the shed out back? The towels are by the sink. Alright, now I was all ready. Looking at me, my mom stared quizzically. What's going on, Keiichi? Where are you heading to in that getup? 
come to dump again illegally, he'll be buried completely, and it'll be impossible to dig him out. Hmm. Buttons. Um. Sorry, I got distracted. Uh, and if that happens, Raina will undoubtedly go after the Colonel Sanders in front of the fried chicken place in town. Uh, a bit of excavating. So my classmate doesn't become a criminal. Well, don't be out too late. Mom returned to the kitchen with a puzzled expression still on her face. Cutting through the woods as a shortcut to the dam site, I ran into someone. Ah. Muscle boy. It was Tomitaki-san. Probably taking pictures of wild birds again with that precious camera of his. It couldn't be that all he took pictures of was handsome young men in the twilight? That w That's phrased weird. Like, grammatically. Hey, long time no see. Keiji-kun, right? My due regards. I expelled the rude imagery from my head and greeted him without inciting anything. By the way, was that girl an acquaintance of yours? He's probably talking about Reina. Guessing by the way Tomitaki-san was shaking up, shaken up. What, what, what was that all about? Or, what, what was that all about? She was walking around with an axe. And she was laughing with a huge smile across her face. That was Reina, without a doubt. I don't think you understand, Keiichi. <laughs> it's probably because she could take it home today, so she couldn't hide her excitement. I hid myself because I thought it might be dangerous. Should I call the cops to be safe? Well, it certainly would be quite a spectacle for a girl her age to be roaming around with an axe. Tomitaki-san's reaction was the epitome of logical. It's fine, it's fine. Just leave her to me. Just leave her be, actually. Not to me. She's just wandering around looking for more victims. Tomitaki-san was alarmed by my crass response. Well, it's probably hard for normal people to understand Reina. I'll just toss a bunch of BS out there. If you're to be... Who's talking? If you're to be killed out here, she'd probably be the one to do it. Try not... Is it, is it, is it him or is it me? If you were to be killed out here, she'd probably be the one to do it. Try not to stoop too much around here. Or, no, it was me saying that. Gosh dang it. With a condescending smirk, I started off in the direction of the dam site where Reina was waiting. Before I got too far, Tomitaki-san abruptly called out to me. Keiichi-kun, was that meant to be a warning for an outsider like me? Uh, I didn't mean that seriously. I did try to make it obvious, but... <laughs> I'll try my best to be careful. Leaving only those words behind, Tomitaki-san turned around and left. I didn't really mean to call him an outsider. I wasn't really implying anything when I said that. It was only meant to be a joke, but it felt like I'd said something bad. Is... Does Keiichi have dissociative identity disorder? Like, I, f I feel like he has two minds working at the same time that don't understand each other. <laughs> like, half of his mind knows that things are twisted and messed up and wants to get to the bottom of it, and the other half's just like, LOL, we're children, we're children. Let's play a high rain a chan. <laughs> Although perhaps everyone's like that. Perhaps we all have, not we all. Perhaps all these characters have a uh, dissociative identity disorder. Which is a split personality. I I think that's I think that's, a, that's the official terminology these days. It was when I was in college. They might have changed it. Keiichi-kun, I was waiting for you. Let's try our best today. I understood what Tomitaki-san was trying to say. 
Somebody gallivanting about while waving an axe around certainly would seem dangerous. You should cover the axe with something when you have it in public. It's not good to carry it around out in the open like that. Seems that I lost it, so there isn't one. Thinking about it, there really was no need to try to keep up appearances. Everyone in Hinamizawa probably already knew about Re Reina's e eccentricities. I had to think for a second if that's how you pronounce eccentric. She's probably the only person who could carry an axe around Hinamizawa and not be considered suspicious. Ah well, let's finish this today. If we bust through this last beam, we should be able to pull him out. I've got everything I need. Leave it to me. Okay. I took the axe from Reyna and made my way up to the, up the unstable slope. Just wait, Colonel Sanders. Keiichi Kun will save you. All right, get back. I'll finish this in one go. Twenty goes later. A solid thwack rang out. Rang throughout. I'm pretty sure throughout is one word. Hinamizawa, as if the job was being done by a lumberjack. How is it? Think you can do it? If it looks too hard, you don't have to strain yourself. If I can break through this, then we'll be good. I have plenty of power today. I can do it. But this adversary was more formidable than I expected. First of all, I've never used an axe before. During a school camping trip, I had wanted to split the wood, but I lost at rock, paper, scissors and wasn't able to do it. Because the spot where I was standing was so unstable, I soon became tired and decided to take a break. Raina had already spread out a tarp and laid down some tea and sweets. I'm fine. I'm almost there. I'll make sure Raina can give Colonel Sanders a good night kiss tonight. Yeah. Thanks. Giving Colonel Sanders a good night kiss. How? Come to think of it, Raina, you're a transfer student too, right? Where did you live before? I asked her nonchalantly while drinking tea. I, I had thought she'd lived here all her life. Hmm? In Kanto. Yo! What was your starter? <laughs> but it was still out in the countryside. Why did you move here? To Hinamizawa, I mean. You know, this is pretty far out in the boonies. Why did you... Why did you move here? Does it have to do with your dad's work? Dad said he wanted to move out to a studio. He'd been saying for a while that somewhere deep in the mountain, it's like this would be perfect. Studio? Is your father an artist or something? He paints scenery. Seems that twice a year he opens a gallery for stuff he does. When he started, his works were displayed in an industry plaza in Tokyo, but now they're exhibited in in the Maku, Makuhari me, Messe, me, mes, Messe, Messe? No, not Messenger. Alright, so a mess, I guess it's a German word and it means industrial fair. He's determined to have them displayed in the Waterfront International Exhibition Hall. That's amazing! Let me see them next time. Was there a anagram in here? W-I-E-H. Whee! No. I was too embarrassed to tell her that I didn't really know what kind of pictures my father painted. Well, eventually I would. I picked myself up while giving some vague answers. But you transferred in the middle of the semester, didn't you? 
Wasn't that a hassle? Not really. I was getting bored of the city anyway. I was trying to get answers to Reyna, but I ended up being the one to... Ended up being the one giving out all the answers. With a bit of a wry smile on my face, I grabbed the handle of the axe and headed back to the worksite. The air grew colder and the sun slowly set. There's those cicadas! We're about to have some creepies, I'm sure. The Higurashi began their song, as if to tell me to stop and head home for the day. Just a bit more. Ah, today, I would end it. When I first started, I chatted with Reina as I worked, but now I didn't have that luxury. Hoo-ya! You little... Dang it! I had swung the axe countless times today, just like this. Contact. Shards of wood splintered. The assailants butchered the victim's body with hatchets and pickaxes. I recall that passage from the tabloid. One hit with something like this would smash someone's head in. Axes and pickaxes are not meant to be swung at people, ever. With one last swing, the beam cracked apart. The way I put behind the axe not only split through the beam, but smashed the statue's shoulder as well. The arm came off with a sickening sound. It clattered down noisily, stopping at my feet. Ah. What's the matter? Are you hurt? S sorry. The figure's arm, I broke it off. Oh, that's all? I thought Keiichi couldn't hurt himself. I probably had a really guilty look on my face. Reina said that without said that without a hint of dismay and sm as she smiled. We just need to tape it back on and put a coat over him. Nobody will even notice. I see. Uh, let's pull him out then. Can you get that side? Okay. Seems they have been able to find one of the arms, you see. I laughed dryly at how pathetic I was for considering the arm flopping down and rolling to my feet to be such a bad omen. Both for... Uh, it seems like a bad omen to me! <laughs> Both Reina and Mion knew how sickening that incident was. So they pretended that they didn't know. I looked it up all by myself. And shamefully enough, I was scared. You're pathetic, Cage, you may borrow. You're pathetic, Keiichi Maybara. All right, Reyna. Let's do this in one go. And? Whoa! We did it! We did it, Keiichi Kun! Yay! The right time... The right time to give three cheers. That moment of two days of work bearing fruit. He who was brought to Hinamizawa, covered in filth to meet his end. Instead, we were able to welcome him back. You're pretty lucky, Colonel Sanders. Your new master is pretty is a pretty decent person. Wow, Colonel Sanders, he really is cute. It didn't matter that he was dirty, Raina nuzzled him cheerfully with her cheek. I was dead tired, but seeing Raina's happy face made it all worth it. I hope you carry it back. It'd be bad if it gets dark. Yeah, right. I really want to thank you, Keiichi-kun. I won't forget this. Think real hard about what you'll do to repay me, okay? Well, well I wonder what kind of repayment. I wonder. For now, I'll just hold back my evil cackle. We were ready to take it to her house, but we couldn't go like this. We rolled the statue up in a tarp and lifted him. Because that looks less suspicious. And so Jack and Jill went down the hill, carrying a human-sized bag and an unsheathed axe. I prayed that we wouldn't run into Tomitaki-san. If he saw us here and took a picture, we'll need to get rid of him, lol. <laughs> don't, don't, don't say things like that. Is that meant to be a warning for an outsider like me? Something struck me as odd about the words Tomitaki's son, unable to grasp 
my sense of humor had left behind. Hey, receive new tips. What kind of name is Reina? Seems like a normal name. Reina's not here. Do you know where she is, Keiichi? Huh? She was just there, actually. Hey, Mion. Where did Reina go? Reina? Didn't she go to the bathroom? She did say that she's having bowel troubles lately. I hadn't heard anything about that. No one wants to hear that anecdote. Cheese, don't start on it. Satoko, do you know where Reina went? Reina, you say? I just passed her in the hallway. Reina has class duties today, so she's off to water the flower bed. Ah, it was Reina's turn for class duty. That's very much appreciated. Reina, Reina, Reina. Upon hearing it repeated, a thought came to mind. It's rude to say this about someone's name, but it is a weird name. It was like someone's... F some foreigner's name. What kind of name is Reina, I wonder? What kind of kanji does her name use? Reina is her nickname. She has a proper name as well. What, really? I was sure that Reina Ryugu was her full name. Well, I can understand you making that mistake since we only call her Reina. She even signs her name as Reina. It's like it's her real name in school. I wonder what her real name is. Let's ask her when she comes back. Satoko and Rika Chen looked at each other. You don't need to ask her. I'll tell you what it is. It's the Rei from Ore and the Na from Nara. Her real name is... Her real name is Reina Ryugu. Is that different? Reina, is it? Wait, is her actual name Rena then, and not Reina? Have I been pronouncing it wrong? That's a pretty interesting reading. No, that's not it. Reina is the correct way. I guess it's Rena, not Reina. Alright. Rena had told us that she wanted us to call her Rain Rena. So we call her Reina. Hey chan Rena is Rena, you know. Only strangers call her Reina. You get where this is going? I understood what Mion was saying. It didn't matter what her real name was, only what names we used between us. Reina Ryugu is Reina. She oh. She's nobody other than that. So I was thinking, if I had a nickname, would you call me by that? Oh, so I was thinking, if I had a nickname, would you call me by that? If it's good. So what do you want to be called? Con man. Boing. Rena came back into the classroom. One of the juniors near the door told Rena people were looking for her. What's this now? Who's looking for me, I wonder? I wonder. Seeing that, both Mion and I sneered. Bailiff Yugo doth show herself. Come on, you're quite sinister. <laughs> well, what is this? What is this? Can't you get a Michan or evil bailiffs? A con man? Darn you. Renanos. Renanos. Renanosuke. Renanosuke Ryugo. Today doth be when thou meetest thy maker. Have at thee. What? What? 
Tsuke-san, Kaku-san, show them what for. Aye aye, sir. I expect my fee to be paid to my Swiss bank account. Since it's come to this, we have no choice. We'll just have a grand battle with five people. Rena's fierce punches explode in the in the proper timing to take out the seal. The evil thing that was me on and myself was vanquished in the end. I do hope that Rena does go on a journey to make the world a better place. How about heading to Nagata Nagata Chao? I don't know what that is. My destination is decided by where the cute stuff gathers. The toll of the bell signaled that the break time was over. Come on, come on, Keiichi kun, Mi chan. The teacher's coming. I took Reina's hand and stood up. It was just as the teacher had entered the classroom. Just one more hour. Man, oh man. Got to buckle down for mo one more. Hydration check. Ah. Mm -hmm. All right, save and load. Is it like at nighttime when stuff goes bad? I I think I was actually on to something with the whole people's brains get triggered by the by the higurashi. And they become or they at least start to become different in their headspace. Ahaha, <laughs> how was it, K Chan? So you went to Renaissance house. That wasn't the right voice. So you went to Renaissance house. Wasn't it amazing? <laughs> it's nothing like that, right? Right? Unlike my house, the Ryugu residence wasn't newly constructed. It had been renovated from a pre-existing building. While the house itself was fine, the problem was the yard. There it was crammed with Rows upon rows of oddities. Uh, aberrations. I think it's so weird. I remember watching Monogatari. I, I think the subtitles always called them oddities. Which kind of makes it hard to wrap your brain around like what things are. Which Monogatari, the way it is, you're going to have... A hard time wrapping your brain around anything. Anything in Monogatari. <laughs> but but the books call them aberrations very consistently. I don't think they call them oddities once. And the books are way easier to understand. <laughs> Granted, in the books you don't have to pause uh, and then read a wall of text. I mean, the whole book is a wall of text because it's a book. Anyway, the Monogatari books are way easier to understand than the anime. The anime is still really good. But anime, anime calls them oddities sometimes, and they like occasionally call them aberrations. Yeah, it's weird. They were all the same as Colonel Sanders, stuff you'd see while walking around in town. The cake shop's mascot, Lil Licky. <laughs> That's a terrible name. The total... The Todolman from the pharmacy. She even had the amazing flying elephant from the top of the department store. I'll agree with you that those are cute, but why the mailbox? Won't you get in trouble for that one? But how? So cute, Star. She must have just thought about it because her face filled with delight. So it's the bigger the better. Just as long as it's big. And her room displays the smaller ones. Wait, did Keiichi say that or Rena? I had a chance to see them before. 
And cute kids like Rika Chan are locked away in the basement. <clears throat> and cute kids like Rika Chan are locked away in the basement. Yep, yep. I'll keep anything, Star. How cute. So she takes anything she likes back to her nest. No ill will intended. Hey, Rena. You know about the Statue of Liberty in New York, right? Is that cute? Yeah, cute. How? I want it. The U.S. should probably come up with some countermeasures ASAP. If not, the Statue of Liberty really will take a trip to Hinamizawa in the not-so-distant future. She doesn't have magic powers. Or does she? My apologies for keeping you waiting. Fikachan had returned. No fun being called to the staff room. Did you do something? How rude! Rika isn't a hoodlum like Keiichi-san. <laughs> Nothing like that, Keiichi-kun. Rika-chan is a member of the festival committee. Festival? The, the school cultural festival or something? Keiichi-chan, Keiichi-chan, I already told you. It's the village festival. The Watanagashi. Oh, come to think of it, she did say there'd be a festival at the shrine during the next break. So what's this Watanagashi thing about? Is it like a floating lantern festival? I guess the last part where you set things adrift in the rivers... I guess the last part where you set things adrift in the river is similar. Except we use cotton things like old worn-out futons and paddle cloak... padded cloaks. It's a festival expressing thanks for their years of service. The people living in Hinamizawa dump their futons and padded cloaks in a stream? Sounds like there'd be a lot of trouble if it backed up the current. Maybe they should just drop some fish in and have a fish wrangling competition. Skewer them and sprinkle a little salt? Oh man, I could smell it already. Hydration check. Ba -na -na -na. That's just summer camp. I never anticipated how destitute Keiichi Sen's imaginative capabilities would, would actually be. What? What? How could you tell I was thinking something silly? It was written all over your face. What sort of face could have expressed what I had imagined just now? Hang on, what happens? Oh, I thought it might show my wallpaper. <laughs> Never mind. <clears throat> Rena demonstrated for me. I see no argument there. Ba -ba <laughs> it's, it's nothing fun like that, you see. But you should still look forward to it. Let's all go together! I'll come get you that day. I don't really feel like going to festivals unless someone asks me to. I wouldn't get bored if these guys were going. You won't get bored. We're doing it again this year. Mion proclaim... Proclama... Ugh. Mion's proclamation came as she looked at each member in turn. What was this all about? From the way Mion looked, it was probably a club summer tradition. Oh, the Watanagashi Four Demon Firefight. That sounds awful. What kind of name is that? Uh, I think it's a cute name, though. I tried to object, object sharply, but since Reno looked happy about it, I decided it was pointless to fight it. Since Keiichi is here this year, it becomes five demons. Rika-chan made a small correction in light of my presence. So how does this funky sounding club activity tie into the festival? Oh ho ho! 
This is where you exhibit the skills you've nurtured through your daily club activities. Exactly. We show the full extent of the abilities that the best of the best have obtained through their daily trials and tribulations. But last year the mayor got angry, so we need to make sure not to cause any problems this time. So basically, we're doing club activities while checking out the stalls. Riku-chan really is the only one who explains things so they make sense. I see. So we'll be exhibiting on those busy festival grounds. Rana was right, of course. That would be a reason for the mayor to get angry. Uh -huh. But it's lots of fun. Oh, wow. Probably only go for another hour-ish. That was the only point I, I did not doubt. It would be, without question, fun. The day of the festival was drawing near. Well, putting that aside for now, let's start our club activities today. Any objections? Nay. Our voices rang out in unison. When there's lots of people, card games really are the easiest to play. This really is the most basic of table games. Playing with the marked deck again? We'll use a new one today. There are no marks on the cards, so we'll be on equal footing. I wonder if that really is I wonder if that really is the case. I will have to inspect them. Well, that was fair. Just to be safe, everyone check the cards. Yes, you seem to be fine. Are you all satisfied? Then today, I guess, we'll play President. That's good for five people. Another standard card game. First one to get rid of all their cards wins. Basic rules, play a better card than the one before. You can play straights and pairs and their various techniques. That prove the game like reversals. Is that Typhoon? Not Typhoon, Tycoon. From Persona 5 Royal. <laughs> I know President's probably the more common name for it. I like calling it Tycoon though. But because it's such a well known game, there are lots of house rules for it as well. The name, for example. Oh. In my hometown, we called it Millionaire. I'd like to go over some details. Are the Jokers wild? Can you make a reversal with three threes? No Jokers. Two is the highest. You can reverse a reversal. You only make a reversal with four of a kind, not three. Also, you know how the president sends a good good card to the president? The peasant sends a good card to the president? Oh. None of that. Wait, that's the whole point of the game. While I was confirming the familiar rules, Satoko looked at, over at me cautiously. I probably should have tried to look more like more of an amateur. I was pretty used to this game. It's president, and it's with a new deck. Today I might be able to win! I had the gist of the rules now. But that wasn't everything, was it? So what shall today's penalty be? How about that? Why don't we all write something down on slips of paper and have the loser draw one? Oh, that seemed like it could be interesting. Oh ho ho ho. I'll write a nasty one and have Keiichi san draw it. It would be awful if you wrote a bad one and drew it yourself. Just don't lose! Don't you know best? Oh ho ho! Beyond handed out several slips of paper to everybody. Then write down whatever and put it in this bag. When you lose, stick your hand inside and pick one out. Now then, what would be a good penalty? Worst case scenario, you'd draw what you wrote. Something too intense would be like digging in your, your own grave. No penalty. 
Let's forbid that kind of idea from being written down. Rika-chan's usual suggestion caused Mion's hand to lurch to a sudden halt. Ah, that's so sneaky, Mion-san. She wrote no penalty on the corner of the slip is folded. I see. Just in case he lost you, grab the note with the folded corner and you'd be safe. That was a good idea. Diabolical as ever, Mion. Rika-chan is quite formidable too, being able to see through that. I couldn't underestimate her, even though she doesn't stand out. Everyone, just don't write penalties that are too mean, okay? Nobody agreed to Rena's proposal. Everyone was ruthless. It's fine, Reina, it's fine, just don't lose. Yeah, that's true. I try hard so everyone has to pick the penalty I write. Reina was quite brutal even though she usually appears meek. Better not underestimate her either. Hydration check. I agree with that. I'm very curious what Raina's penalty is in particular. Everyone's penalties are scary. I still didn't know what Rika-chan's Rika penalties would be like. Basically, you can't afford to lose this game. Everybody here ready? We all nodded determined, determinedly. Having confirmed that, Mion dealt out the cards. Finally, the battle begins! It's a shame you can't, like, actually play. Although I think, apparently, you're supposed to... Later, like, you have to actually play Hanafuda, I guess. So that's something. I had a decent starting hand. Card after card was played in the middle. Not needing Mion to... Tell them both Rika-chan and Satoko played their cards without hesitation. Rena and I were the only ones who paused to think. It seemed that Rena genuinely couldn't make up her mind, but I was different. I was like a shark stalking its prey, just waiting for the right time to strike. Huh? Huh? Will this work? Then I'll play this three and I'm out! Nine! N nobody Eight! Seven! I'm out! Five and five. I'm out. Then I'll discard this last one and I'm out! Ah. I missed my chance. The loser of the first round was, of all people, me on. And now I was certain. Today I could win! Now, now then. Mi-chan, pull out one of the slips, okay? Beyond accepting her defeat, scrounging around inside the bag, pulled out a piece of paper. What? Who did this? Who wrote this? Mion quivered and shrieked. Um, what is it? What is it? Huh? Rena was also surprised when she peeked at it. What kind of terrible thing was written on it? Pet the principal on the head. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, wait. How is this bad? Keiichi-san, do you not understand? The principal is balding and ashamed of it! Satoko yelled with a serious look on her face. But she wasn't as loud as Mion's shriek. What could it be? The principal is a martial arts master. He boasts about traveling all around the world, perfecting his skills when he was younger. He switched to teaching after seeing the poor state of education in Japan after the war. He was in... He was inhuman. Pet that guy's head? As club president, there's no way I can set a bad example by refusing. Phew. Hoya! She bellowed out a yell as she dashed off down the hallway. Wouldn't it have been easier to sneak out quietly and try to do it without making a fuss? Probably impossible. They say he used to hunt sea slugs just by sensing the presence. 
I could do nothing but wait with bated breath. Pow! A rumble shook the classroom. That's the principal's aerial opener. Boof, pow, whap. Zash, kaboom! Falling the launcher with a jab, jab, strong, fierce combo. The one, two, three? One, two, one, two, one, two. Go, go, go! Sorry, rhythm heaven. He's even using a meter! From how it sounded, the principal's jumping fierce sound. The principal's jumping fierce sounds like a multi -hit, hit combo. I don't know what that means. Jumping fierce? I guess that's a type of fighting game move. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Nothing I could do now except stay calm. I understood now why there were no delinquents at this school. After a few moments of silence, Mion slumped back to us. Headed. Is that good enough? Mayon said before collapsing. She's alive at least. Now he can continue the game. A monster. I was amazed the person who made club activities like these could say that. But now, the worst penalty is gone now, right? Right? Rena tried to lighten the mood that was only met with Mion's malicious grin. She was serious now. I'm not holding back anymore. You'll all get yours. Oh, okay, so that's why they're not trading cards, because then this then the same person would probably keep losing. If they're punishing every round. Makes sense. The pace of the game became bizarrely quick. I could tell the game had gotten more intense. Ace! Three, four, five, and I'm out. I'm out as well. <laughs> I'm out too. Three, I am now out. Eek, I lost. And the heavens chose to vanquish Rena. What kind of penalty, I wonder? What kind of penalty, I wonder? It wasn't exactly hard for her to be worried. Just thinking of the level of difficulty of Meon's first penalty still made me quiver. And so the penalty she drew with trembling fingers was... What the heck was this? Speak like a maid. Huh? Well, what is this? This one? What do I need to do? So basically it means you have to use the same expressions as a maid? Huh. How? Oh. Okay, master. It hit me like a ton of bricks. I had no idea who wrote that penalty, but she was awesome! But then, Rana, can you shuffle the cards and deal? Y yes, master. Uh, I could just die right now. A anyway, let's continue. Right, Rana? Yes, master. The eagerness to which I was goading Rena into addressing me as master was downright impressive, if I do say so myself. Hiya! I won't lose any more, I'm out! I shan't lose either. I'm out. Then without that, I'm out too. I, I can't believe it! Is it Rena's loss again? Rena, again, what kind of penalty would be? Would it be this time? I was delighted by the mysterious sense of anticipation. Anticipation? No, this was conviction! Remove one piece of clothing from the top and bottom halves of your body. Oh, okay. That's just indecent! Who could have written this? My face reddened in anger. If I didn't yell something out, I wouldn't be able to hide my shaking. Ah, uh, who did write that? God, please give that man a Nobel Prize. <laughs> Nobel Prize. That'd be an ignoble prize. Not good, not good. What was I... What I was thinking about was written on my face. How? Oh, Mi-chan. 
Brandon begged Mion with teary eyes, but everyone knew Mion's answer already. Nope, nope, won't go easy on you. You lost, so take it like a man. Uh, understood, Master. How? Uh, I'll undress. Spirit sensor. <laughs> okay, I doubt. Well, I'll keep my finger on the button. What? I looked around thinking someone else would probably stop her. Of course, I wasn't exactly trying to stop her either. Then I heard the rustling of clothing, the sound of her skirt hitting the ground, sent my heart racing. Okay, we're putting up the sensor. Is this fine, my master? I looked away like a gentleman. All these club activities need to be ruthless after all. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, oh. <laughs> Keiji san, whatever were you expecting? Certainly, we would not have her stripped if she weren't wearing her PE clothes underneath. Satoko poked fun at me, but right now I can't. I can't hear it. Not bad, Keiji san. This old man never even thought she would go after her like that. Y you've got it wrong, I didn't write that one. The master didn't write this one? Her squirming around in her PE clothes made it impossible for me to not feel anything. Calm down, Keiji Maybara. Mion probably wrote that one and planned to go after me as I panicked. Can't fall for a trap after knowing it's a trap. Clear your head. Calm down and assess the situation. Sure, there are no CGs in this game. Why do you keep censoring it? Because I don't know! I don't know that. But now that you've told me, I don't have to. I was determined to think my way out of this. It's a sound novel. It's a, it's a, it's a visual novel. <laughs> what? <laughs> you gaslight me right now. And the answer was quite simple. I win. I then became a god. I, who had already entered the domain of godhood, what would dare stand in my way? It was like they were... were pulled to me magnetically. I was picking up aces and twos like nobody's business. Eek! How could my luck of the draw be so bad? Satoko lost, right? I'll draw them. Satoko lost, right? I'll draw the penalty. Speak like a little sister. Ugh. Fine. Oni-chan. Yes. The pleasure of making this brat disgrace herself. Ah, this old man loses again. Mion's lost, right? I'll draw it. Rare girl's school swimsuit. No! That's what I wanted K-chan to get. Yes. <clears throat> Mihan's despair was like sweet honey. M Master, I lost again. Rana lost? I'll draw it for you. Let the person in first place rest their head on your lap. Is he, is he making these up? What's happening? Uh, how? In this outfit, Master? Yeah! <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> She's not wearing a skirt. So it's her bare legs. Alright. Eek! How many penalties did they write? I thought they each only wrote one. Anisha, and you're too good, Sniffle. So Toko lost again? I'll draw it. Obey the person in first place. How about I have you give me a shoulder massage? Fine, Oni-chan. Come on, do it a bit harder. Don't use your nails! Ah. <laughs> What's happening? I transformed into an evil dictator and couldn't be doing any better. It felt like I could control how the cards played out with my mind, and even decided what suits would appear just by willing it. By the time I realized it, I had already assembled a harem. 
I was laughing haughtily as I rested my head on Rena, who was now a bloomer-clad maid. Satoko was wearing a collar and had taken on little sister properties. That's weird. <laughs> Mayon was fanning me while wearing a school swimsuit. Huh. Oh, today is Lester's overwhelming victory, isn't it? Eek, please refrain from moving your head around so much. I began to think. Why does man have no end to his desires? How could I wish for more than this palace of dreams? What is it, Keiji? I'm sent by the thought of a man having no end to his desires. That was it. Rika-chan hadn't been the first, but she continued to escape being in last. Keiji is quite, re quite greedy. I said you should know when enough is enough. I know that very well, but how to say it? I feel like I wouldn't mind if I died now. Oh, don't say that. Eek! Master, please refrain from moving your head around. Eek! You say you wouldn't mind dying. Then that can be arranged. Rika-chan said it with her usual calm manner with a cheery tone. This was undoubtedly a declaration of war. Ow. They have, a, they have a sprite for that. Go, Rika-chan, go! Take him out! <laughs> they have the collar on her. Why? Why, though? Defeat this arch, arch devil of perversion! I might not be able to win, but I'll beat him. Such stoicism from this little girl who's always hidden away in Satoko's shadow. It would probably be rude not to meet her head on. I shall face you myself, little one. I saw Mion swap a few cars with Rikachan in the middle of the game, but pretended I didn't see it. Do you believe you can defeat Keiichi Sama with just that? Two. Ace, ace, ace. Eight, 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 eight. Reversal. Everybody looked over at me. I was still brimming with confidence. Mwahaha. <laughs> The four of them have allied against me. That's it, you're making me laugh. That was good. Reversal, reversal! What? How could such a thing be? Satoko let out a shriek. Mwahaha, <laughs> you simpletons. Using up all of her cards before calling the reversal left Rikachan with no good cards. She was defeated soon after. I lost. <laughs> Finally you fall into my clutches. Now I'll pick one out. A woe? A woo, what's this? Or cat ears, a bell, and a tail. Bell collar and a tail. <laughs> Even the penalties were as I wished. What's happening? Rikachan hung her head and equipped the three holy artifacts. <laughs> it's questionable as to why such things were in Mion's locker, but since I had no objections, I didn't ask. Oh, that's cute. Whoa! This was so... How... Oh, stop. <laughs> I felt like I had become Rena. This was definitely cute! No, no, no. Cute, isn't it? Isn't it? How? I want to take her home, Star. That wasn't me talking, that was the actual Rena. Thanks, I figured that one out. Mew. As Rika Chan mimicked a cat, teary eyed, rings of smoke escaped from Rena's ears with an audible poof. Rika Chan must take home, taking her home, just for a while. I, I won't do anything strange, nothing strange. Uh huh. I see. I still have one trick left. Mion gasped and dropped her fist into her open palm. If Raina must, she can take me home. After Raina son beats Keiichi, she can! They thought that Raina in cute mode would be able to defeat me. Would it be that easy? 
opposing me was the same as opposing God, I teach them their place. How preposterous that Rena can defeat me. Oh. Eep? Eep? For a moment, I didn't know what was going on. The 52 cards danced and flowed freely between Rena's hand like the machinations of a master magician. What's she doing? In the middle of those flowing cards was Rena's ecstatic expression, her head bobbing around. Sh -sh -sh Shall we, Keiji kun? Hurry, hurry! My whole body knew it already. I was going to lose. No play? Nothing to play, Kei chan? Then with this, I'm out. Everyone cheered. I was spent. Phew. I've got no regrets. God, thank you for letting me dream a little. You got weird fetishes, man. <laughs> now then, I'll take one out. Keiichi sounds penalty. This is it. Everybody peeked at it in unison, gazes flicking between the text and my face. All day today, I did as I pleased. I'll do whatever it is. What's on there? All. Huh? Every penalty up until now. What, what, what the heck? This game's rigged. Keiichi-san, should you not be speaking as a little brother? Uh, yes, Oni-chan. But also as a maid. Oh, this is quite addicting. Next, I'll have you rub my shoulders. Keiji kun, I don't need the lap pillow, so so do that other one, okay? Uh, y yes, master. How? Keiji kun, that's so cute. Say it again, say it again. No, spare me, master. Rena passed out with a squeal, blood spewing from her nose like a fountain. Oh, all right. My dignity was being trampled on more than a communal doormat. Next is from this old man. I'm going to have you fan me for a good long while, you know. Boosh boosh. Oh, almost forgot. You need to wear this, don't you? This school swimsuit. Uh huh? This is for girls! I can't wear the one. F can't I wear the one for boys? It was clearly written here, wear a girl's school swimsuit, as you can see. It's okay, they're not that uncomfortable. <laughs> not that I would... No. Shush. Satoko was like a loan shark. Actually, me trying to escape reality as fast as humanly possible is pretty adorable, if I do say so myself. But, 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 whose school swimsuit am I going to wear? If I were wearing one of yours, you wouldn't like it, right? Ah, this old man doesn't care about that kind of stuff at all. Think of it as a little benefit. I'm not that in shape, so I think even Kei-chan can fit into it. You look pretty in shape to me, I don't know. The executioner surrounded me, wagging their fingers. No! My first thought, it's tight around the waist. Second thought, the chest area was pretty loose. Third thought, the crotch area was... Ow. Yeah, it kind of just... Puts your junk out there, huh? <laughs> That's why people don't like... Looking at people in speedos. Huh? Katie kun is bending forward. Cute, cute! Why is bending forward cute? What? You'd be ready to wear the cat ear spell and tail. Kei-chan, wanna look in the mirror? It's amazing, really. It's probably best if you look. The stern scientific calculating nature mixed in with her fascination made me on very scary. Uh, I would like to respectfully decline, Master. Your ensemble is complete. 
If only we could send you home dressed like that. <laughs> but then is it enough? I'll change and... While I was saying that, Mion placed her hand on my shoulder and Rinka-chan slipped up on me without a sound. Not yet, Keiichi. There's still the first penalty left. In this getup? Rika-chan patted my head without saying a word. Sir, excuse me! Yes, please come in. I stepped forward into the principal's office. My bell collar jingled adorably. The principal froze solid with a smile on his face as he saw me. I couldn't blame him. In the sacred place of study, specifically in his office. Though I said excuse me as I entered the sight of a person... Entering in a school swimsuit, cat ears, a collar, and a tail. And for it to be a young male student, without a doubt, any normal person's psyche would have stopped cold. But this could be explained. We'll call it Uncanny Valley Camouflage, if you will. When humans see others, they can only begin to act after confirming this is human. Meaning that if he could not comprehend what was in front of him, then in those moments, before we could begin fully... Before he could begin to fully process the situation, his mind was completely blank. This was my one and only chance for victory. My penalty. Rubbing the principal's head. Principal! I challenge you- or I heard what sounded like a shaking three times. Is three gauge super? The principal said one thing to me. What does it mean to be a man? And in a heartbeat... Oof. The tremor resounded through throughout the Hinamizawan twilight. This game's weird. Higurashi when they cry. Watch out, I'm gonna cry on ya. You better watch out, you better not cry, you better not cry, you better watch out, you better watch out, you better not cry. That was terrible. Why did I do that? Hmm. Well, okay. I feel like keep going for a while. I do kind of wish the, uh, the non-horror segments were... A little shorter and a little less like weird comedy skits <laughs> that don't fit <laughs> but whatever I mean I guess they do fit because they're all that's what Higurashi is is half weird comedy skits but I don't know it would probably make more sense if I was watching it instead of reading it Rena was giving permission to caress Rika-chan's head as much as she wanted so they headed home together, very pleased. Once again today, it was just Mion and I going home. Man, that was intense. I didn't know Kei-chan was so good at president. No, I was more surprised than anyone. If I was playing with guys, I wouldn't have been that strong. What, the desire to win is what got you? But still, it was pretty bad. Being carried off on a stretcher in that outfit will probably haunt me until the day I die. <laughs> well, that's fine, isn't it? You were able to do something to boast about for the ages, too. How? Well, when she says it like that, we both smiled at each other. Hey, it's Buff Dude. Oh, we meet a Ben. Oh, we meet a Ben. Oh, we meet again, Keiichi Kun. It was Tomitaku-san. I felt like I'd been running into him quite often. Hey, take any good pictures? Well, a few. So... Tomitaku-san suddenly leaned over and whispered into my ear. You sure get around. Today you already have a different girl? It's not like that! No need to hide it. It's important to get lots of experience when you're young. I... Uh, no comment. Because Tomitake son let out such a crude laugh, Mion knew what we were talking about without even hearing him his whispering. 
I've heard enough th through the grapevine that Mr. Tomitake is quite the catch himself, hmm? Huh? No, that wasn't my intention. Sure, sure. Keep up the good work and take plenty of pictures. See ya. Neon seemed to really want to get rid of the slop quickly. From the way she spoke, it seemed as if Neon knew Tomitake-san quite well. How's the year treating you, mister? Staying until the Watana Watanagashi? Yep, I plan to. After photographing the festival, I plan on he heading back to Tokyo. Being a photographer sure is easy. Being a photographer sure is easy. Be sure to win some big award and become famous. You spent all your best years on photography after all. And I don't think I'm that far gone. They don't say men start developing their own unique flavor and... Don't they say men start developing their own unique flavor in their 30s? Uh, yeah, that's what I keep telling myself. Why does it matter what you taste like? That's so gross. <laughs> oh, look at the time. I need to get back to the inn before it gets dark. Tomitake-san began to take his leave with a dry laugh. It did look like he was outmatched by Mion. Now then, I'll see you both at the festival. Bye, friend that won't kill me. After waving a hand cheerfully, Tomotaki-san disappeared amidst the cries of the Higurashi. The way he's going, he probably won't ever get famous. I had him pr promise he'd display a picture of me if he ever opened up a gallery, but I don't think that'll ever happen. So you know Tomotaki-san. Yeah, he's an acquaintance of sorts. But you know how easy it is to tell who's an outsider. I sound like you meet him all the time. Tomitake-san comes around to Hinamizawa regularly. Maybe two, three times a year. He says he's taken pictures of the seasonal scenery and wild birds, but, well, those photos are nothing to phone home about. The image of Mion painted of Tomitake-san was fairly unique. The Tomitake-san I knew was more mysterious. The words flowed naturally from my mouth. I'll bet he's a reporter. He's trying to get to the bottom of the, this whole Hinamizawa nonsense. I wonder if he's really here to take pictures of birds. Neon stared blankly at me as if to ask, why do you say that? It just seems he's here for something other than taking pictures, I think. Don't you get that feeling? about the incident, the dismemberment. Oh, you too! If so, you've got good instincts, Kei-chan. Oh. Oh, you too? Rather. <laughs> she agreed with what I thought, but was quite chipper about how she said it. You knew about it then, Mion? Of course. He might be able to pull one over everyone else, but he can't fool this old man. Mion was posturing pretentiously, but I had easily come to a very different conclusion from what she was imagining. It felt like all apprehensions I had about Tomitake-san disappeared, lifting a burden off my shoulders. I was finally able to appreciate how clear the evening sky over Hinamizawa was. <sighs> I exhaled everything from my lungs and inhaled just as much. Smells like dusk. What is it, Kei-chan? It's just that I never thought the cries of the Higurashi could feel this good. <laughs> What's gotten into you all of a sudden, Kei-chan? We both continue to giggle, not knowing why. I wonder what Reina is doing. I bet she's getting her fill of Rika-chan by now. She's probably in the middle of asking her over so she can treat her to dinner. It'd, it'd be great if she was able to take her home. I wonder. Rika-chan is pretty good at that stuff. Yeah, they feel the same. They head pad That head-petting penalty was probably from Rika-chan. 
I thought so too. The only one who could get away with patting his head is Rika-chan after all. Just pointless chit-chat. The hot day felt like it was being cooled down by the cries of the Higurashi. I said I would stop around now-ish, but I think I could probably go through another day. <laughs> I got an achievement called a fate worse than death. You know, I don't think right now was uh, the appropriate time for an achievement like that. <clears throat> Alright, get ready for spookums. We're greeting the end of the rainy season sooner than in prior years. On this day, when it feels like summer will soon arrive, I'm pleased that everyone is in good health. The season for the Watana Watanagashi is finally upon us. I believe the assistance of the town council will make this a wonderful festival. I also wish to ask for the assistance of everyone in regards to a few things. 1. Collecting Bizarre Goods We look forward to a well-received Hinamizawa Grand Bazaar Exhibition. Holding a massive collection of, of excess goods and used clothing. No raw goods, please. Management, Makino, tell so-and-so. Recruiting Little Festival Drum Dancers. The renowned Little Festival Drum Dancers group known for its careful choreography, the Shofu Society, or is it Shofu? Shofu Society is taking last minute participants. We're looking for any showboat Elementary and middle schoolers. Management, blah, blah, blah. Taking donations. We are accepting donations in multiples of 1,000 yen. For every 1,000 yen donation, you'll be awarded with a refreshment stand ticket. Management, so-and-so. We are always taking suggestions for ways to improve the festival at all times. If you have an interesting idea, call so-and-so. There's a 200 yen refreshment stand ticket attached below the cut line. Huh. Okay. So that was just a flyer for the festival. Actually, I'm gonna see real quick. That's the end of chapter 5. How many... How many chapters is in chapter one? I'm gonna try to do this without spoiling myself. List of Higurashi when they cry chapters. Alright, I was afraid of this because... Wait, what? Wikipedia, you're not formatted very helpfully. Someone just tell me. <laughs> there we go. game length which doesn't mean a lot when I'm re when I'm reading things out loud it always takes longer Ch -ch -ch -ch. 
Ah, forget it. I'm not going to get an answer. Maybe I'll ask Mimi off stream. But I, I can make it through another chapter today. A few days had passed since the incident. During that time, either Mion was busy or Rika-chan had to help with festival preparations, so we couldn't get everybody together for club activities. Even though I thought I would never want to participate again after the years, it shaped off my life each time, not having it only made my heart grow fonder. I'm really not honest with myself. Tun Tun. Today we finally had our club activities again. These weren't the same old club activities. It was called Watanagashi Five Demon Firefight. It was one of the biggest events in the club. Keichi! Does this yukata still fit you? Yukata? Y yukata? Yukata. Can you try it on for a second? Mom pulled out an old dusty yukata. Nah, I don't need a yukata. Those are embarrassing, so I'll just go in my normal clothes. But this is a festival! Wear it, okay? Rena and the others said regular clothes are just fine. If I was the only one wearing a y yukata, it'd be even more embarrassing. But they look nice. Just wear it, coward. I put on the same old vest as usual. Yo! Keiichi wears a vest too. I'll be going with Reina and the others. So you don't need to worry about me. Is that so? I'll be going with Dad when he wakes up. Dad let out a loud snore from the sofa. From how it looks, he must have pulled an all-nighter last night. He just finished sending his manuscript, so I might not wake up for a while. It seems my dad writes for art magazines sometimes, too. I've never read it, though. I wonder if my dad is really a famous artist. Since his own son is saying something like that, I can't imagine he's selling well at all. Or all that well, rather. But he's able to feed a family of three, and my life isn't exactly full of hardships. It could be that he's some master painter, and I didn't even know about it. Ding dong. Actually, I'm gonna do something here real quick. Ding dong! Kate, you could, are you home? Uh oh, it was already time. I didn't want them coming here, so I was planning on leaving early and waiting outside. Oh my, it's Raina Chan. Thank you for always looking after Kate. Ah, but ma'am, he's also been looking out for. Are you blushing just for meeting my mom? Don't get all flustered. It really doesn't feel right. Let's go, Rena. Since Rena would continue to space out if I left her here, I grabbed her hand and dragged her out. Rena Chan, look after Keiichi for me. How? Yes, ma'am. Even if it means I must even if it means I must sacrifice myself, Stark. Why don't, why don't you do it right now? She waved back even as I was dragging her away. Okay, Kei Chan. You hungry today? We'll take care of that that at the at these stalls, blah, reading. You thought I'd let myself get full knowing the club activities will involve the stalls? Wouldn't have it any other way. Where are Rika Chan and Satoko? Are they already at the temple? Yep, Rika-chan's a festival committee member after all. Satoko-chan is probably with her as well. I see. Alright. Let's make some noise today. Yeah! 
We were already in high spirits with just the three of us there. Bow. It was way more lively at the Furude Shrine than the last time I came, far exceeding my expectations. Throngs of people were crammed between rows of market stalls lined with colorful paper lanterns. Despite that, it was actually quite enjoyable. There sure are a lot of people here. I can't believe they all live in Hinamizawa. Everybody attends the Watan Watanagash Ma Watanagashi. Uh, mouth. I think about half the village is here. It's not just that. Municipal and youth councils from neighboring towns and villages advertise this event as well. That's right, there aren't that many students at our school. But there's a lot of kids here today. It just doesn't feel like a festival unless there are kids running around after all. That's true, I agree. Uh, hello, good evening. These two knew everybody we came across. I don't know who's talking. Of course, I greeted them as well, but I still wasn't familiar with everybody yet. Oh, Renachan. Thanks for the food you brought me a while back. My son loved it. He said, oh, oh, that's not, that's not me on. Oh, Renachan, thank you for the food you brought me a while back. My son loved it. He said it was delicious. Ah, uh, it was nothing at all, Star. I'm glad he liked it. Say hello to Kazuma Kun for me, please. Hey, if it isn't Sonozaki o ojo chan I'm in charge of a stand again this year, so make sure you come visit. Pops, have you gotten fatter? You'll end up having a heart attack with a gut like that. Oh, this kid here is new. Oh, this kid here is new. Are you one of our underclassmen? He's one of my members. An upcoming hopeful, if you cross him, you could crush your stand in one night. You've got Missy's seal of approval, I see. Hope you take it easy on me. As you could imagine, Mion was chatting away with old guys running the stalls. Mi-chan is really energetic after all. She's really popular with the older men. <clears throat> I think Ren is pretty popular too. Being cute and all. That was, of course, so long as her little condition didn't flare up. But as long as she's blushing quietly, she's pretty cute. Uh, I'm popular with some people? Really? With some people. I evaded giving her a straight answer by roughly tussling her hair. The stall keepers came all the way from town. It's not really a festival without them after all. So we're going so we're going to mess with them now? I don't care what kind of match it is, I'm going to win it. Oh yes, <laughs> I'll try too. Hey, you're all very late. It's unacceptable to keep a young lady waiting, Keiichi-san. Oh, my bad. So where is this lady I've kept waiting? What, what did you just say? All right, Satoko was in top form as well. Seemed she was all excited about being able to get everybody in the club together for the first time in a while. Well, Mika-chan, cute Rena let out an elated sigh. It seemed that the real lady had made her appearance. Good evening, everyone. Good evening to Keiichi as well. I'm not part of everyone? What the heck? Woo! Looking good! You're looking sharp again this year. I enunciated that. So weird. Get cute! Gonna take you home! Yu chan was wearing a Shrine Maiden's outfit. Yep. Reina's little outburst was completely understandable. Yu chans clothes sure look like the real deal. Is that a real Shrine Maiden outfit? My grandmother made them by hand. They're quite authentic. Rika-chan Rika has an important test to do at the end of the festival, so she's wearing this. I see Rika-chan was on the executive committee because she performed all the Shrine Maiden rituals for the festival. She does look cute. 
but never mind. Um, <laughs> my work is only during the finale of the festival, so I can still play for a while. But we cannot afford to waste any time. Let us begin. All right. It felt good to wander around the festival with just the five of us. Mion called everyone over to the stand that caught her attention and proposed a rather odd competition. Takoyaki eating race. Everyone has to buy their own. Ready? Go! A standard in vendor stalls. This takoyaki stand. What was especially sad for these kinds of events was the fact that they were simply balls of dough. Takoyaki in name only. It burns! Are you okay, Kate? You couldn't? Have some water. I like the I, I like the high energy BGMs. They're crazy. <laughs> my my, eating those scalding takoyaki's whole is suicide. I guess the trick is to buy the ready made ones that have been left there for a while. They really don't taste good. The stall next to it was a shaved ice stand. It was still a bit too early in the season for that, but right then it didn't matter. Let's do shaved ice this time. It's a shaved ice eating race. Ready, go! It's a shaved ice eating race? I, I can't. As long as you can melt it a bit with your body heat, then... It, it's so cold! Not smart. This old man ordered it with plenty of syrup. It'll melt quickly when it's mixed up. The stooges were too late. The moment they chose to tackle it head-on was their downfall. Ah, 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 ah. Finished! K-chan is done? That was too fast. It, it couldn't be. Keiji kun you didn't add water from the goldfish tank behind you, did you? That can't taste very good. Next to that was another old favorite, a cotton candy stand. Why don't we do this one next? Yo, I'll enter a cotton candy eating race. Of course, it's a speed eating contest. Hey, hey, how do you eat cotton candy quickly? How? On Satoko's mark, me on Satoko and I all decompress. All. Wait, I'll compress the cotton candy with our bare hands. Why did I say decompressed? Time it took to stick the whole thing in our mouths? Three seconds. I expected Satoko to figure it out, but I didn't think Kei-chan would too. I'll have you treating me like I... I can't have you treating me like I'm a newbie forever, can I? It won't taste very good. Rika-chan had also crushed it between her hands and stuck it into her mouth. This is probably the only place in Japan where people eat cotton candy like this. I think only Rena's cotton candy was happy with how it was eaten. But I felt like we'd end up doing stuff like eat noodles through the nose contest or human water pump at the goldfish scoop at the rate things were going. Human water pump? What? This old man will probably still win, too. I am simply no match for me on sun when it comes to eating repulsive things. Yeah, seriously. What's up with you guys? Are you telling me you don't want to have blue Hawaii top yakisoba eating contest? Shake, shake. Both Sat Satoko and I shook our heads in unison. Um, can we have a game that doesn't involve food this time? Can we? Rena's proposal was a godsend. It was about time we played a different kind of game. It also seemed like neither Rena nor Rika-chan were any good at speed eating or gorging themselves. Why not? Okay, Rena, I'll let you pick out the next game. Anything is fine. Well then, well then, I'm going to be the judge. 
find cute things on the festival grounds. You have one minute. I'm fine by me. I know exactly what Rena likes. Alright. I think I can win with that. Ready, go! Oh? Why aren't Keiji Kun and Rika Chan starting? Why not? Mion and Satoko dash up madly, but Rika Chan and I calmly stayed right where we were. Could it be you've already found it? The cute thing? We've already found it. Keiichi too? Yeah. What is it? What is it? I can't wait! Both Rika-chan and I stood motionless for a few moments before Mion and Satoko returned. This is probably the first time we've gone head-to-head -head like this. It will be the first. Rika-chan, you expect to win with that, huh? I am a member of this club as well. Win by any means is our society's third rule. Rika-chan sneered, sneered to the best of her ability. You're on! Both Mion and Satoko came back, each with their own pl plan of attack stuffed in their arms. Okay, okay then. I mean, okay then, okay then. Let's go in order. Let's start with the club president, Mi-chan. Too bad, you guys. I'm ending this now. This old man brought this. Where'd she get those? They were all tin diamond-shaped signs. Club curry, snake coil incense, and oran or oronamen sea. How about this? That's very understated. A little too understated, Mion. I see those stuck up on barbed wire fences. They were more nostalgic than cute. Can you explain what part of that is cute? There were puffs of smoke noisily shooting out of Rena's ears and nose, almost like a steam train. I... I didn't get it. I, I shall be up next. It is this! It was a hard-drawn poster from the Ladies' Society's Roasted Corn Stall. Did I say hard-drawn? Hand-drawn. <laughs> it was a really bad sketch done by a housewife. An anthropomorphic roasted corn... Drawn without any sort of real plan, its very existence invited a sense of sorrow to the viewer. Weep. That was the sound of blood jetting out of Rena's nose. It seemed to have rated higher than Mion's. I really didn't get it. It feels like your artistic sense is a little avant-garde by about five eons. Oh, those were nothing but mass-produced signs after all. They had no chance against something hand-drawn. I couldn't even begin to follow the way those guys were thinking. Then I will be next. What, is she gonna present herself? Next is Rika-chan, is it? What can you even do without anything? Did you and Satoko both forget? If Rika-chan felt like it, she could simply... After moving back about ten yards, she began waddling up to Rena. Seeing that, both Mion and Satoko gasp. Oh no! Too late! Rika-chan tripped over nothing and laid motion after falling down. Rena hurried over to her. Rika-chan, are you alright? Alright? Rika-chan had a lump on her forehead and tears welling up in her eyes. Only her fingers peeked out from her sleeves. This was the vital part. <laughs> <laughs> the palms of her hands were covered by her sleeves. She had made just a single wound. Mew. Oh, wow! C -c -c cute! Cute! Going to take you home! I had completely forgotten that. The play that I personally had to use. Rena's face went completely... Oh, that was... Wait, who's saying that? Rena's face went completely red, her head bobbing back and forth with excitement. She embraced Rika-chan and began rubbing her cheek against her. I expect no less from her. Not a single element was overlooked. Lolly, Shrine Maiden, Brink of Crying, Mew, it was perfect! 
a simple trip transcended into pure moe. Now this is what you call art. I don't really get the Mew part, but okay. K-chan is a pretty weird definition of art. I'll just pretend the sharp sting of those words cutting through me like a razor was a figment of my imagination. Rika-chan turned her gaze to me with a daunting smile as she was caressed by Rena, who was in full cute mode. Now, Keiichi, can you beat me? The cold smile is frightening, Rika-chan. It must be my imagination, but I see a demon inside her sometimes. You know, you may be onto something. Kei-chan seems to have his own plan of attack. I wonder what he's going to show her. Don't make that joke, cheese. I also wish to observe the play kei san will make. Could it be? Is kei also going to give a performance? I passed in their pointed stares. I pulled a Rena, who had no signs of cancelling out of cute mode, away from Rika-chan. How cute thing, cute thing. Casey couldn't let go. I'll show you something even cuter, so just hold on for now. Huh? Oh? Is there something even cuter? It's a bit too crowded here. Let's go back there. Rena looked very surprised as I pulled her back to as I pulled her behind the shrine. I cannot fathom what Casey san could possibly be planning. Is he, is he gonna kiss her? Or... I don't know if kissing is cute necessarily, but she'll like it, I think. <laughs> this is K Chen after all. No, it couldn't be. Keep on fighting, yeah! After a bit, I returned. And a bit after that, so did Rena, dragging her feet. There's no way that scoundrel Kei-chan did something to innocent little Rena. Leon and Satoko passed by me, heading straight to Rena. What exactly did he do to you? For a moment, Rena was too dazed to realize someone was talking to her. <gasps> ha! Oh, it's me, Chen. How? Rena! Are you alright? Did Kei-chan do anything to you? You know, he didn't do anything strange to me, how? This is quite severe. Exactly what did Kei-chan show you? Um, it was so cute, how? Cute? What did he show you, Reyna? Reyna let out a really long, how? Her eyes sparkled as she spoke. Cute, so cute. Oh, no way. No way. Alright. <laughs> Wamp whoop. In the blink of an eye, a Mion and Satoko's elbow smashed into my face. Yeah, you deserve that. Huh? Huh? What? What? Showing Raina something so dirty. I mean, it's clean. You sick pervert. I should have you beaten into oblivion. Wait, you got it all wrong. Dark billowing arrow flowed from Mion and Satoko. It was no good. They're gonna kill me. Mi-chan, I'm not sure what's going on, but you got it all wrong. You see, Keiichi could not had... <laughs> it's a seal keychain. <laughs> it's a fur seal keychain. Why do you need to walk her around the stall for that? Around the shrine? Rika-chan stuck her hand into my pocket and pulled out my keychain. Eh? He said he made it long ago for one of his summer school assignments. He said he doesn't show it to others often because it's embarrassing. Yeah, so small and cute. He tried his best to make it. It's so wonderful. Oh, oh, this old man. Thought you meant it was Keishi's cute little fur seal. Oh, 
I expect no less from me on Sun. You misconstrue things in the wildest ways. They slung insults at each other and looked like they were ready to tear into each other at any second. I beg of you, come in the clear, would you mind getting off of me? We were interrupted by a flash of a camera. Uh oh. I mean, how's it going, muscle boy? Hey guys, you all seem energetic as usual. It was Tomitaki's son. As I lay crumpled on the ground, Mion and Satoko continued to bicker above me. Rikuchan was patting me on the head, and Rena was still in Kiyut mode. It was probably quite a lively scene. It's a fine evening indeed, although it's rather poor etiquette to photograph a lady without her permission. That's right, at least you don't really need Satoko's permission. Ugh! Satoko dug her heel into me. Good evening. Ah, uh, you're heading back tomorrow, aren't you? Are you able to take lots of good photos? Thanks to you, I got plenty of good shots. Now's your chance to take a good shot. Take a good, take a good, take a good shot. Tonight's the last we can s we can see old Tomitake-sama, isn't it? It's such a shame. Hurry up and have your major breakout soon. She's just as rude as ever, aren't you? I really am sad I won't be able to hear that voice of yours for almost half a year. Be sure to have as much fun as you can tonight. You'll be back in Tokyo tomorrow, after all. That's true. It will be another six months, until I can enjoy another night where I can see the stars. Tomitaki-san looked up at the night sky cheerfully. At that moment, even though he was smiling, I sensed a bit of sadness. Why don't you move here, Tomitaki-san? In Hinamizawa. Tomitaki-san was speechless. It's not very convenient here. No shops or recreational sports. There might not be anything really here, but, you know, everyone knew what I was trying to say. Oh, wait. I was reading that wrong. It's not very convenient here. No shops or recreational sports. Blah, 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 whatever. tomitake san was also well aware. Serena, Mion, Satoko, and Rika-chan. None of them butted in. I've only been here for less than a month, so I don't really know everything about it. Normally, I'm a really talkative guy, but in situations like this, I'm at a loss for words. Okay, that was the music looping. I thought it was, like, fading out because of things were getting serious. But in this situ situation like this, I'm at a loss for words. Even though all this was happening in such a boisterous setting, it felt like all the background noise was fading into the distance. This place is probably... This place is probably... Tomitaki-san rested his hand on me, gently silencing me. Okay, it was me. Thank you, Keiichi-kun. Mion-chan and Rena-chan. Satoko-chan and Rika-chan. Tomitaki-san's smile was so slight, it looked as if it was going to crumble at any minute, but it was warm. I also think it would be great if I could live here. Those might have been cruel words coming from a, from a kid who didn't need to worry about working to feed himself. A hand touched my back. It was Rena. Katie kun you shouldn't pick on adults. It's not nice. Pick on them. The background clamor of the festival returned. We won't be seeing him for a while, after all. We need to make sure tomitaki san also enjoys tonight. When Rena smiled, the mood instantly got brighter. That's true. I think I'll do just that. Ah! Hey, Mi-chan. How about it? Can we let Tomitaki-san in on our club activities? That's a great idea. Or so I thought, but Mion had a snobbish look on her face. One of the requirements for membership is residence of Hinamizawa, you see. Come on, Michan, just for today. Don't be mean. Well, he does come around every, every oh, 
around often every year. I'll make him an honorary citizen. Wow! Yay! Now then. I wonder if this aged fellow well past his prime will be a match for me. He doesn't look past his prime. Let's have him show us the wisdom of a mature adult. <laughs> Can you keep me keep up with us young'uns? Tommy Taki son stepped back slightly at her audacious grins. I, Mion Sonazaki, club president, do hereby authorize honorary citizen Tomitake uh, Tomitake's entry into our club. Her words were quickly drowned out by our cheers. What, what, what do you mean by what do you mean by club? What a club does, you see. In order to cope with our complicated society, we perform various activities with various rules. Sometimes they are in your favor, and sometimes they work against you. I'm pretty weak, so I prefer you not single me out. Let's try to get along. If you wish to mock our childish games, then this will be the perfect opportunity. We'll leave you with nothing. You won't even leave the hairs on your butt. Uh... So it's a club where we play games together. Of course, Rika-chan was the only one to give an answer that made sense. Alright, just what I wanted. I'll take you up on that challenge. Don't be too rough on me, my mentors. Tomidaki-san... <coughs> Sorry. Sorry. Tomidaki-san got riled up and did a victory pose like he was ten years younger. That's perfect. Hey, those aren't anime people. I just realized. We continued walking through the festival with Mion in the front. Now we looked like a family of six. It had some intensity to it. Same rules as always. The loser will, of course, be subject to a penalty. Tomitaki-san was a bit surprised, but to us it was just the same as always. Regardless of how terrible a penalty it was, just don't lose. Rana was also brimming with determination. She didn't have any intention of losing. That's true. I tussled Rana's hair to lighten the mood. She giggled to hide her embarrassment. I see. This is what you, what it means to feel like a kid again. Tomitaki-san whispered that, that to nobody in particular. At that moment, we heard an old man call out in a strong voice. Looking over, I realized it was the man Mion I greeted right before the festival. You're here. Little Miss Sonozaki. Seems you brought quite the crowd. We came to eradicate your entire stall. The stall was a shooting gallery. It was the usual setup where you had to knock down the prize you wanted with the court gun. The rules are simple. Three shots. The winner is whoever gets the biggest prize. Everybody shouted their agreement. There was no need to consider how to win, since the conditions for victory was simply size. The biggest prize at the stall. It won without question. It was that one, wasn't it? Well, that tet that teddy bear. C cute. Rena was gazing longingly at the large stuffed animal. It was intentionally placed on an unsteady platform, so it was possible to get it if you hit the right spot. It's magnificently set up to make someone think that. Not bad, Keiji-san. I figured you would see through this scam instantly. Hmm. The most logical course of action would be to aim for some candy or a doll. The intent analysis had already begun. In this club, you'll get eaten alive if you don't come prepared. Everything hinges on what plan you can come up with before the main event. At some point, a large crowd had gathered around us, making a big fuss. There is this much of a following for our club's infamous event? Knocking that bear down ensures a win. Only three shots. To use them all, just trying... That'd be rough. Hey! I have other... Hey, I have other customers waiting, you know. Who's up first? The first one has the advantage of being able to aim for the easier prizes. 
but it's dangerous to compete without knowing the gun's quirks. Tomotake-san's take on the situation was pretty good. He gets what our club is about. Well then, to be fair, how about using rock, paper, scissors to decide? How about it? That's really the only way. Rock, paper, scissors. Sounds like fighting game music. After a couple matches, it ended up with me on being first. I didn't want to end up first. Ah, oh, well. I just think of it as a handicap. Gramps, gun! Here you go! When the shooting range guy handed for a rifle, Mion looked at it looked it over intently. She didn't forget to check the cork bullet either. Okay, this gun is brand new, isn't it? No faults, not bad. Mion raised the gun in one swift motion. It was completely different from her careful inspection. She was shooting from the hip. Fire! Reload. Fire! Reload. Fire! Flop. Flop, flop. Three candy boxes fell, one after the other. A big haul! The crowd paused for a moment in awe, and then erupted in cheers. Whoa! Awesome! But that was quite good. Tomitake-san was at a loss for words after seeing such shooting prowess. A amazing, Mi-chan! Three! Three! Her accuracy was incredible. Her choice of targets wasn't bad either. The three Mion had gone after were fairly large and pretty easy to knock over. They were all targets with very high return on investment. Who's up next? Satoko? Careful, the bullets are light. Next was Satoko. The rifle looked a bit big for her lithe bodily lithe body, but it didn't seem like she had any problems with the weight. Of course. I shall aim for the grand prize. She proclaimed that she was going after the teddy bear. Well, you're not going to win like that. Dang, Satoko, such a bold move. The moment she knocks it over, she's gu The moment she knocks it over, she's guaranteed to be in first. Good luck, Satoko-chan. Satoko was the opposite of Mion. She aimed at the l target quite carefully and squeezed the t trigger. Bah! These bullets are too light! First two bullets... The first two bullets stuck the bear... Struck the bear in the torso, but it only shifted a bit. You need to aim higher towards the head, or it won't work. Satoko's third bullet wasn't aimed at the bear, but at the candy box below its arm. I hate to say it, but it appears the bear is just too much for me. She went boldly after the big catch. But since she switched over to less impressive prey at the last second, the crowd only gave a strained laugh. Were they laughing because she lacked the courage? These fools know nothing. A fine attempt, Satoko. You've gotten better. The palm of Mion's outstretched hand went pump as it tapped down lightly on Satoko. She appeared to just be... Ooh. Talking hot air, but this was actually completely calculated. Darn that Satoko, just to avoid being in last place, she dared to switch over to an easy target. Without shame or honor. Magnificent. I'll allow you to take the bear, Renaissance. I pray for your victory. Okay, okay. Thanks so much, Satoko-chan. How? bear son, so cute! Rena was up next. She couldn't hit the broadside of a barn as regular Rena, but she had said the bear was cute. I wonder how Rena Chan will do. I hope she's able to hit it. At least one. You're underestimating Rena, Tomataki san. Yeah. It's Rena, you know. It's Rena Ryugo, you know. If it was to get that teddy bear. Whoa! Tomotaki-san wheeled around to see what all the commotion was 
spectators were making was about. If it was to get that bear, she'd be able to shoot through that through a pinhole. The one known as Ren and Ryogo could do it. She's shaking. She's shaking. How cute. Rena couldn't bear her excitement over the bear's slow rocking. Now Rena couldn't lose. Not bad, Rena san. The less collected you become, the stronger you get. <laughs> Whoa! Another big cheer. Rena's bullet hit the bear's forehead again. Not enough. The bear seemed to wobble more than before. But it might not be possible. You, you, you never know. With Ren and Chan's skill, it might be. While Tomitake san was just as excited by the crowd, Rika chan's analysis was not swayed by emotion. If Rena had ten more shots, she could surely knock it over. But with just one more, no matter how you looked at it, no go. Ow! The, the crowd let out a dejected groan. She had shot it right in the forehead three times. It was a bit late, but they gave her a good round of applause for the attempt. How? Person, take him home. How? She should be praised for her valor, but she had no trophies to show for it. Then, at that moment, the old man flicked one of the candy boxes with his finger and handed it to Rena. This is for you, little lady. Huh? You're giving this to... To me? How? The gods wouldn't forgive me if I let you go home empty-handed after such a display. There was another shower of applause. Rena turned bright red and I pulled her back over to us by her hand. You did a good job. Your cute mode really surprised me. How? I really wanted Mr. Bear. Wah. It was, it was easy to see that it, it only needed a little more to be knocked over. Rena had done quite a lot for me. I still need to pay her back for that delicious picnic. All right, then I'll, I'll get it and give it to you. What? Tomitaki-san had stolen the words right out of my mouth. Okay, okay. Please, Tomitaki-san. Good luck. Darn you, old man Tomitake! Stealing the good part for yourself. A small hand stretched over and fell gently on my head just before I was overcome with frustration. You keep fighting too, Keiichi, okay? Tomitaki-san carefully studied the bear. Setting his sights, he shouldered the rifle while holding the other two shots in his hand. Hmm? Why is he doing that? Yes, no doubt. Tomitaki-san is aiming for... Pop. 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 The time between shots was short. It was meaningless to shoot again once it stopped shaking. So Tomitaki-san was relying on rapid fire to win the battle. It visibly wo wobbling much more than it ha ever had before, but that was all. It still didn't fall over. How? Too bad. All of Rena's momentary expectations from watching it sway violently turned into a de dejected sigh. Hmm, I really thought it would work. Oh ho ho! It seems that since you're a man, you will not be receiving any candy. That was it. It meant Tomitaki-san had no spoils of war. So both Kei-chan and Rika-chan can just shoot down small easy prizes to avoid being dead last. Avoid being the loser, huh? Oh, sorry about that. It's your turn. It's your turn, Kei. She couldn't. Best of luck. I was the fifth shooter. I took the rifle from Tomitaki-san. If I took the ruthless route, as Mion had suggested, then I'd go for a small target. Except, when I picked up the rifle, I definitely got a feeling from it. It was burning passion. Passed down to me by Tomitaki-san. Regret of not being man enough to fell the bear that Rena wanted. 
Yes, that's right. If I didn't aim for the bear, then I would, wouldn't be a man. Hang on. I want to... I want to see how they look next to each other in the old style. <laughs> it's, it's weird. It's weird switching to it. After all, that was my promise to Rena. You didn't make the promise, though. You were just going to. Huh? What promise? What? To shoot down that bear. Then give it to Rena, that one. Uh, you mean, how? The crowd went wild when they saw our conversation. Woo! Cool Oni-chan! You got balls, man! That's not it. Fine, uh, fine men of the crowd. If I didn't do this, then Rena might mug the old man running the stall on his way home. No, that's not it. That's not it at all. Why can't I just express my honest feelings? I'm so soon. Kaylee san surely talks the talk. <clears throat> Kaylee san surely talks the talk. But how would he actually intend to bring down the bear? You know, make something fall on it? Shoot the stand it's on? Make it fall over? Rena and tomataki sans shots did make it tilt a bit. I think finishing the job will be difficult. Case you could. If only there was some way to shoot faster, I'd be able to pile more power on this way from each hit. Good luck, Case you could. After taking two deep breaths, I shouted over to the guy. Two more rifles. Huh? The crowd murmured amongst themselves. He's gonna fire three shots at the same time. I wonder what Keiichi san is up to. One person can't handle three rifles at once. I get it. Nice thinking, Kei-chan. Mion was able to figure it out magnificently. Basically, what was taking the most time was reloading the shot. Th that's right. Then by putting three preloaded rifles next to each other... Oh, he's not going to try to fire all three of them at once. Why not? Tommy Takisan went silent, peering at me, and the bear threw his lens. His photographer's blood predicted a miracle will occur. And then the crowd finally picked up on what was what I was planning. They let out a great cheer. They chanted my name. Keiichi! Keiichi! Rapid fire is the key. If I miss, all is for naught. Phew. After letting out a deep breath, I paused. Relax. Now! At that moment, it felt like time itself had stopped. I felt like I could see the trajectory of the bullets. Hit it. And knock it down! The first shot hit the bear on its head. The second. The third! The bear swayed hard, and then... Woo! Woo! Yeah! Oh! The cheers began before the stuffed animal even finished falling off the shelf. The guy caught it before it hit the ground and tossed it over to me. You actually knocked it over. You got me! Amazing! Congratulations, Keiichi Kun! Keiichi san has finally learned how to use his head. I see, you in a, I see you in a slightly better light now. I didn't do it all by myself. Everyone hit it, and those small bits together brought it down. This trophy belongs to all of us! Except for you, Mion, you didn't shoot it. Right. This was from all of us working together. Me didn't hit it a single time. Erk! After holding up the teddy bear like it was a championship trophy, I handed it to Rena. Here. This is from me. No, from everyone. Thank you for always making your delicious lunches. 
Rena, thinking she was never actually going to get it, was momentarily speechless. I, I can't, Keiji-kun. This is everyone's after all. How? In that case, I was the one who knocked it over. In that case, I was the one who knocked it down. And it's mine! It's mine, so I'm giving it to Rena. I pushed the stuffed animal towards her again. This time, she embraced and accepted it. You've watched out for me ever since... You've watched out for me ever since I moved here, after all. I'm really grateful, you see. Thanks a lot. <laughs> How? Keiji-kun! Thanks so much. Rena dove at me. Mion told me a few days later that Rena... That Rena kissed me, but I didn't realize it during the excitement of the time. I remembered what I was trying to say to Tomitaki-san earlier. There really isn't much of anything here. But there are lots of things you can't find anywhere else. I gained a lot from coming to Hanamizawa. Especially at that moment. The crowd's cheers echoed on and on. I feel like something's gotta happen like right after the festival, right? Right? Right. <clears throat> From the altar set up in front of the shrine, the drums sounded with a booming echo. It was the finale of the festival. I'll be going off ahead then. Uh-oh. I need to go and get myself a good spot too. Well then everyone, see you in a bit. Wait, what was this punishment for losing? Both well, Rika-chan and Tomitaki-san gave their farewells and disappeared into the crowd. I wish both of you the best in your endeavors! Now. Now, shall we be off? Yeah, might as well go see Rika-chan's charming figure. Let's go! Yeah. Wait, where's Rena? What, what are you doing? Keiji-kun! Mi-chan, save me! <clears throat> Since she was carrying such a ridiculously large stuffed animal, she was being carried by the flow of people. What is she doing? She must have her hands full taking care of that bear. So I'll leave Rena-chan in your care, Kate-chan. Hey, my hands full taking care of Satoko. Who would want to be looked after by you, Mion san Ouch. Ouch, please don't pull on my arm. Before losing sight of Mion, I grabbed the back of Rena's collar. Keiji could not there. Don't grab me there. Always oh, so bossy. Where can I grab then? That's a question. Oh, um, how? I didn't feel ashamed at all. Rena was ashamed enough for the both of us. I grabbed onto Rena's hand and dashed after Mion and the others. We're gonna be late. Let's hurry up. Y yeah. I hadn't realized Rena's hand was so delicate. Maybe she needed a bit more exercise and, nut and nutrition? That wasn't what I meant. Not at all. My ears burned. I tried to keep calm. Repeating the phrase, keep it together, Kate. Keiichi Meibara in my mind, but it didn't look like I would be able to do it anytime soon. I can't read anymore. I need to end the stream soon. <laughs> I really didn't want Rana to see my face right then, so I pushed onward, dragging her along without looking back even once. There's already a huge group of people gathered at the altar in front of the shrine. The fire at the altar made it as bright as midday and just as hot. There's a pile of futons warded with sanctioned rope in front of the altar. Wait. What? Kind of think of it. They did say it was a festival where they... Where they did something with the cotton and futon... Futons? Futons? Keiichi-san! Reina-san! We're over here! Satoko waved her hand from the front row. Ah, sorry, sorry. 
making our way downtown through the mass of people. We reached the spot they'd saved. How was it? Were you able to have a little bit of excitement with Reyna? Y you punk. So that's what your plan was? Instead of replying, Mion gave us a perverse grin. How was it, Reyna? Was Kei-chan's hand bigger than you thought it would be? Ha, ha, how? Rena turned bright red, puffs of steam shooting out of her, and she apparently throttled me, Mion. I heard something slice through the air and turned around to see Mion on the ground with a welt on her face. Mion, when were you hit? Between the ha and oh of her how, I think. Rena, it's not good for you to punch your friends to hide your embarrassment. I didn't hit her. Well, well, whatever. How? Thump. The thunderous beat of the drum echoed, silencing the crowd. You must all be quiet. It's beginning. It was a solemn ritual. Rikachan entered the entered dressed as a shrine maiden, followed by members of the municipal committee. The elders all looked at Rikachan and clasped their hands in praise. The only thing allowed to disturb the profound silence was the flash of Tomitaki-san's camera. What's the big thing Rikachan is holding? A hoe that's used for this festival. It's a sacred farming tool that only shrine main, only the shrine main may touch. There's an awkward shape for a piece, for a piece of farm equipment. Bah. Not uncommon for something used in rituals. After reciting a Shinto prayer, Rikachan approached the pile of futons gathered at the altar. She swung the hope skillfully, plowing it into the futons. Each and every little movement of this performance probably had to be done in a certain way. Without a doubt, this was a ritual. What next? Staring out futons? She's purifying futons that absorbed illnesses from the people over the winter. So when Kei-chan said airing out futons, he wasn't completely wrong. Why is there like a beeping? It's definitely in-game. Rikachan's face was already dripping with sweat. The hoe was probably really heavy. She staggered side to side with the momentum of each swing. Satoko looked on, silently lending her support. Worried? Rika, Rika practice every single day with a mochi hammer. She will certainly prevail. Satoko's hands were sweaty, and whenever Rika-chan started to sway a little, she held her breath. Why wasn't... Beyond a candidate to be the Shrine Maiden. It feels wrong having Rika-chan swinging around something so heavy. I do it if they ask me, you know. And well, it's not something just anyone could do. That's true. Shrine Maidens need to be pure after all. Ow. <laughs> Mion drove her elbow into my side. With the thud of the big drum, Rika-chan gave a solemn bow and descended from the altar. That triggered a round of generous applause. After the Shinto priest had raised up the clan's futons like a portable altar, all the spectators stood up. Following after the priests, we all marched on at a moderate pace. They descended the shrine's giant stairs in a line. What's happening now? Washing the futons in the river? <laughs> Watanagashi means setting cotton adrift, you know. The procession continued right up to the bank of the stream. A fire was stoked high and it was bright as day here too. People started crowding around it and clamoring. Alright, get in line. Line up, Kei Chikun. I wondered what was up. I have a bad feeling. Maybe we'd get some holy wine? Red and white bean buns? <laughs> it's not food. 
I said it was cotton. Ah, but of course. They didn't call out the Watanagashi for nothing. I finally understood. The municipal committee members pulled out the cotton from inside the futons and balled it up like mochi, handing it out to people. Rena dove into the line and brought out some for me as well. We then proceeded to the bank of the stream. Since it's your first time, Keiji-kun, just copy what I do. She held the cotton in her right hand, and waving her hand as if to purify it, she touched it to her forehead, chest, navel, and both thighs. Forehead, chest, navel. Why, why both thighs? Wait, what? Or I guess, not separately, but like, in the center of them, with, when they're touching. You do this three times and silently give thanks to Oyashiro-sama. Oyashiro-sama? What's that? The name of, name of the shrine's god? Yes, it's the guardian deity of Hinamizawa. It brings about miracles and curses. Both miracles and curses. So you must be sure to show respect. That sounded like a pretty frightening god. But well, when in Rome, I was officially a resident of resident of Hinamizawa now. After all, doing as Reina showed me, I touched the cotton over myself three times. Thank you, Oyashiro-sama. Thank you, Oyashiro-sama. Oyashiro-sama. This way, all the evil that possesses you is sucked up by the cotton. Then you let it gently drift away on the stream and you're done. Together, Reina and I set our pieces of cotton afloat on the surface of the water. Flowers of cotton blooming in the water had sucked out all the evil festering in Hinamizawa and drifted off, disappearing into the distance. It was wonderful, like those floating lantern festivals I'd seen on TV. The best part, though, was feeling like this rite of passage had made me a true resident of Hinamizawa. Okay, I was expecting something creepy to happen. While, oh. <coughs> While stirring off into the stream, I somehow got separated from Rena. I wasn't very lonely, though. I know this place now. This is where I live. My home. It's probably better if I just stay here instead of wandering around aimlessly. Someone would truly find me while I was enjoying the evening breeze. I heard a familiar voice. It's Tomitaki-san's. I headed towards it. How'd it go, Tomitaki-san? Were you able to get some good shots? Yeah, fortunately. Tomitaki-san was with a girl. I felt a little like I was intruding. Hello, you get a character portrait. How was it, Keiichi-kun? Did you enjoy the festival? From the way she spoke, it seemed like she was a resident of Hinamizawa. I really should try harder to remember people's faces here. What was her name? Well, um, it was fun. My face must have given away how desperately I was trying to remember her name because she gave a light-hearted chuckle. It's probably because it hasn't been long since you moved here. It's pretty hard to believe, seeing how friendly you've gotten with the other kids. If that's how it looked, it was probably all thanks to Reina and Mion. Perhaps you feel more like a resident of Hinamizawa after taking part in the festival today? Hmm? I wonder about that. Wait, was that her or him? I think it was him, actually. Oh, that's not like you. I tried to get used to Hina Hinamizawa, but there were still plenty of things I didn't know. The faces of people I'd met, for example. Things that had happened in the past as well. Oh. You feeling left out because of... You feeling left out because of something like that? It's not so much a feeling... Uh, as, it's not so much as feeling left out. It's just, I'm not sure how to say it. The incident at the damn construction site. The fighting over it and other conflicts. A terrible incident they pretended they didn't even know about whenever I brought it up. Even though it was in the past, 
as someone living in Hinamizawa, I wasn't wrong to want to know about both the good and the bad that had happened here. If it will put you at ease, then I'll tell you everything I know. Tomitaki-san's smile made me more relieved than I'd ever been. It was hard to think of what to ask when someone said, ask me anything, though. Even when there was so much I wanted to ask. Then, could you tell me about what happened when the dam was being constructed? There was a big incident where Hinamizawa was going to be submerged, right? I think the locals would be more knowledgeable about the dam than I am. Well, if you don't mind, I'll tell you what I know. I'll tell you what I read in the newspaper, though. Tomitaki-san's eyes entered an unfocused gaze as he searched through his memory. Then he spoke. The decision to start the dam project was finalized seven or eight years ago. I heard it was the next major project after Kurobe. There were three major issues in Japan at that time. Improving inter-island transportation infrastructure, meaning the higher demand for electricity, and flood control. There was a boom of dam building due to the massive economic stimulus they provided on top of generating electricity and flood control. Hinamizawa had the right conditions to support dam construction, so it was singled out. The dam reservoir would have been covered quite a lot of ground if it was completed. The entire area right up to Yaguchi way upstream would be underwater. But why did they have to pick a populate, populated area like Hinamizawa? Couldn't they have instead picked a place where nobody lived? Hmm. I'm not really sure why, but I heard that it was the right terrain for building a dam. Of course, there were protests here in Hanemizawa. Rikishan had said that there was a battle. From that choice of words, I had guessed things had turned violent. There was a trial, and it, ev and it even brought up before the it was even brought up before the national diet. It was covered in Tokyo newspapers, too. Mian had told me all about that as well. I'm sure every resident of, the, resident of Hinamizawa had united to fight together. The feeling of solidarity found here, which could not be expressed properly with mere words, was likely brought about by that battle. Battle, battle, battle. As a result, bribery and scandals were brought to light. As things got more and more complicated, they eventually halted construction. If I wanted to know, now was my only chance to ask. It was certainly a bizarre incident that boys my age would be curious about. I felt a little shame from the fact that I was... I was pretty... that I was petty enough to have my curiosity piqued by... Rena and Mion's refusal to talk about the event. But I figured I might as well ask since I had the chance. Just so I would stop thinking about it so much. So there was a dismemberment, right? There was. I happened to be here in Hinamizawa at the time. So I remember it well. Tomitaki-san's answer was nonchalant in contrast to my hesitantly forced out question. It was about this time four years ago. It was the day of the Watanagashi, if I recall correctly. The debate on whether to continue construction on the dam was in disarray. Scandal after scandal brought to the project near the end. The incident was in the f was the final nail in the coffin for the dam project. A fight at the dam construction site ended in the victim being murdered. During prosecution, the six. Assailants divided the remains into six pieces and each hid one. Five of the six criminals turned themselves in out of guilt, but one was still on the run. The right arm he'd hidden had yet to be found. The major details lined up with what was in the tabloid I had read earlier. It certainly was a tragic incident, but it wasn't so terrible that Rana and Mion needed to hide it from me. 
I guess they didn't want someone who just moved here to have a negative impression of Hina Misawa. I felt grateful for having friends who worried so much about me, as well as shame for being so interested in it. It was near the end of all the troubles with the dam, you see. So everyone was saying it was Oyashiro-sama's curse. Oyashiro-sama's curse, huh? Oyashiro-sama was the name of the god at the shrine that held the festival today, if I recall correctly. I see. Their guardian deity rained divine punishment down on the evil dam construction for trying to flood Hina Misawa. Apparently the younger ones didn't think so, but it seems the elderly in the village never doubted that it was Oyashiro-sama's curse. The woman with Tomitake-san said with a mischievous chuckle. Tomitake-san began laughing with her. It was so infectious I ended up laughing as well. But I wonder about now. There are quite a few, I think, amongst the youth too. A few what? People who believe in Oyashiro-sama's curse. The woman's lips were curled into a tight, into a smile, but her expression turned stern. Then after that, it continued every year, always around this time. Continued? What continued? Tomitaku-san paused for a second, as if to build up some suspense. Then he whispered to me, as if some. Someone might have been listening. Every year, on the day of the Watanagashi, somebody dies. There it is! The year following the dismemberment, on the day of the Watanagashi, a man from Hinamizawa who had supported the dam fell off a cliff, overlooking some rapids, and died while he was on vacation. Unfortunately for his wife, the body was never recovered. He supported the dam construction even though he lived in Hinamizawa? Or, he supported the dam construction even though he lived in Hinamizawa. At the time, there were whispers among the elderly saying it was Oya, Oyashiro Sama's curse. The woman chuckled mischievously again. Then the next year, the night of the Watanagashi, the shrine sh Shinto priest died suddenly from an unknown illness. His wife drowned herself in the bog that night. The shrines... The shrine Shinto priest? You mean he was from the shrine here? The woman nodded. There was a rumor amongst the villagers that they weren't able to quell Oyashiro-sama's anger. Then, the year after that, again on the night of Watana Watanaga... Watanagashi. They discovered the battered body of a local housewife. Housewife? Up until now, all these mysterious deaths were people involved in the dam or with connections with Oyashiro sama. With that in mind, could the housewife have been involved in some way too? Exactly, the woman stated slyly. No, it was more menacingly. Chad, are you scared? I'm, I'm a little spooked. I'm a, I'm a little, I'm a little, got a little tingly. It's mostly the music, though. One of the victim's relatives, you see, was connected to the younger brother of the dam supporter who fell to his death two years before. The younger brother is, the younger brother is still alive, it seems, but it did bother him quite a bit, so we moved to the neighboring town. For a while, I stood there with my mouth agape, the battle over the dam construction with Hinamizawa's future at stake, and the murder at the center of it all. That was all I knew, and that was all I wanted to ask about. But that wasn't all there was to the story. Homicide, body disposal, accidental deaths, terminal illness, suicide, fatal beatings. I'm a pretty level-headed person. I don't really want to believe in curses. But the freakish deaths happened every year on the day of the Watanagashi, and all of them were related to the dam construction. It was easy to dismiss each of them as coincidences by themselves. 
when you put them all together. Dismissing all of them as coincidence would then defy logic. I don't believe in curses, but every single year on the day of the Watanagashi, somebody or something makes it happen without fail? The woman chuckled again, as if she picked up on what I was thinking. It felt like she was saying, Maybe there was? Maybe we frightened him, stuff like that. I felt embarrassed at being read so easily. I pressed Tomitaki-san to continue a bit. To continue, a bit of impatience and irritation in my tone. Then? So someone died the next year, right? Who was it that time? Or, oh. Then? Uh, whatever, whatever. I wonder, who do you think, Keiichi Kun? Th th the hell? When he said it didn't agree with me, the sarcastic tone ticked me off. Don't avoid the question, I'm being serious here. Oh man, my skin is crawling. Hey, hey, calm down, Keiichi Kun. I realized when she tried to calm me down that I had been panicking. We are trying to avoid the question, Keiichi Kun. It's just when you say the next year, that's... This year. Don't smile when you say that. That's today. When she hesitated to say it, Tomitaki-san finished for her. Wait. I broke into a cold sweat. I really didn't like the direction this was heading. Nobody wants to speak of it, but they all think it's going to happen again tonight. The festival was so cheerful. The, the festival is so cheerful, though. Oh, the victim last year, the housewife, she was a non-believer. Turns out she didn't even attend the Watanagashi... She didn't even attend the Watanagashi festival. There's a rumor going around that if you didn't participate in the festival, you would incur Oyashiro's sama's wrath. Did you hear anything about this, case? You could I never even heard a whisper of that rumor. But then... The reason everyone was at the festival was they were afraid of the curse? I, fi I figured that must have been the reason. There were a lot more people at the Watanagashi than usual. I guess everyone was just afraid after all of Oyashiro-sama's curse. I couldn't utter a single word. Why are you guys acting chill about this? It's not chill. In this modern age. Where we've made progress in all scientific fields. Shedding light on the unknown and misunderstood. Where black and white television has been eradicated and we sent men to the moon. Even with all of our accomplishments. This can exist in modern society? Tons of invitations were sent out to neighboring towns, youth groups, to help pad the numbers. But after that string of events, a few decades, few decided to, to join. The municipal committee members were complaining about how hard it was to gather participants. Also, the police officers are treating each case as isolated. They don't believe they're connected. They're trying to keep it quiet, so it's all plain clothes officers. Plain, plain class officers? What does that mean? Like low ranking officers? It finally began to dawn on me why Rana and Mion were reluctant to talk. If nothing happened during this Watanagashi, everything would have been over with and I'd be none the wiser. If nothing happened, all would be well. In that case, it would all end up being just crazy talk. I should have just pretended like I knew nothing from the beginning. They wouldn't have had to act like nothing happened. And we would have all gotten back to life as usual. Maybe it was too much for him after all. The woman ran her fingers through her hair as she sighed. N no, no, it wasn't. Not, not at all. I tried to act strong. But that just served to emphasize how much the information had unsettled me. After seeing how I looked, Tomitaki-san appeared to regret saying anything. 
letting out a sigh. He then spoke, forcing an awkward, upbeat demeanor. Keishi Kun, surely you don't believe in such things as curses? Well, no, I believe in serial killers, though. <laughs> if the causes of all the crimes were unknown, with the perpetrators and their methods all mysteries, then I would think it's the work of... Uh, then I would think of it's the work of a curse. But that's not how things are in reality. The police are investigating the evidence and suspects to uncover the truth. Wait. Well, that's not how things are in reality. The police are a bit... Okay, that was... Alright. Hearing him say police made me feel a lot better. He was perfect for repelling the word curse. Yeah. The first one. The dismemberment, for example. I told you, didn't I? All but one of the perpetrators were arrested. It's only a matter of time for the last one. The motive turned out to have been an argument they had while intoxicated. That's no curse. It didn't start with a quote. That's no curse, don't you agree? That was true. If it didn't happen on the day of the Watanagashi, then I wouldn't think it was related to the curse at all. The accidental death of the man who supported the dam is the same. He was in a position that made others hate him. The police made a point of investigating from that angle. They concluded it was an accident. Not foul play. But they both happened on the day of the festival, right? <laughs> Just think about it, Keiichi Kun. Do you think people with a lot of enemies here in Hinamizawa could participate easily in a local festival? It would be especially hard for them to be around during Watanagashi. So they probably left Hinamizawa. Hmm. Intentionally around this time of year to travel, don't you think? It wasn't a very clear explanation, but I sort of understood what Tomitaki-san was getting at. So I pressed on earnestly, asking more questions so that I could convince myself. Then, Tomitaki-san, what about the priest who died after that? one with the unknown illness that also happened on the day of the festival it's even easier to explain what happened to the Shinto priest the Watanagashi is a really big event that happens once a year it was probably from all the built-up stress or may have been because of a pre-existing condition but it was an unknown illness it's hard to believe something with an unknown cause could exist in all, with all of our advances in medicine. It's just an exaggeration. Rumors making rumors. Anyone would get worked up over having incidents happen two years in a row. The sudden death is quite unnatural, though. Of course, the police ordered an autopsy because of the strange way he died. But there wasn't enough for them to open a full investigation, you know. Turns out, it was just a sudden death due to illness. The priest's wife committed suicide, correct? What about that? I believe I already explained that. Everyone was shaken up by the incident happening for a third year. Those who are of strong faith were quick to believe it was the work of the curse. Of course, that included the priest's wife. Apparently they found a suicide note that said something like, My death will quell Oyo Oyoshiro-sama's anger. Well then, how about the next incidents with, uh, with the housewife? That happened on the day of Watanagashi too. The perpetrator's already been caught, and the case has been closed. Turns out, it was some nut job trying to continue the legacy of the Hinamizawa curse. Then, then, how about the incident the next year? Uh, oh, uh, oh yeah, this year is the next year. Tomitaki-san gave a hearty laugh. Nothing will happen. Not this year. There was never a curse to begin with. Oh, I I haven't looked at this lady in the old style. She looks a lot more like friendly in this version. <laughs> she she she's just chillin', she's just vibin'. 
she's laughing. She's having a good time. Whereas, uh, the updated one, I don't know, something about the angle she tilts her head, she looks a little more sinister. It's just that a group of people be believed it was the explanation for a string of coincidences. My internal computer finally got itself back on track. I felt a bit embarrassed by how childish I'd become after losing control and panicking. I, I can see very clearly now that Keiichi Kun really does love Hina Mizawa. Even if oyashiro samas curse actually did exist, Keiichi Kun couldn't bring himself to believe that such a thing existed. I felt very relieved. I should probably just forget everything I heard tonight. I'll greet Rena and Mion tomorrow with the same smile as always. They'd probably also like tonight to end without incident so they can continue on tomorrow without having worried me. Perhaps seeing my change in attitude, the women, the woman who had been listening and in, had been listening and stretched as she got up from the rock she was sitting on. Well then, I should be getting back. Goodness, I think I may have gone on a bit too long. There were so few people compared to the crowd from before. I could only make out a few groups of families enjoying the cool evening air. I looked at my watch. It seemed we'd talked for the better part of an hour. Didn't you come along with your friends, Cage Kun? Not going to look for them? Oh yeah, they might all be looking for me. <laughs> You're quite the scoundrel, making the girls look for you. See you, Keiichi kun. Have a nice night. You too, Jiro sama. I'll see you a bit later. Tomitaka san seems to be quite the scoundrel himself. So his name is Shiro. J Jiro. After dusting off her backside, she disappeared into the crowd of people still busy cleaning up the shrine grounds. Keiji kun So sorry! In her place, Rena came running over. I could see all the others behind her. Speak of the devil. My bad, Keiji-chan. We got so caught up in our discussion. I completely forgot about them all caught up in my own conversation. So we're, we were even. My, so Tomitaki-san was with you. This works out perfectly. We still need to settle the shooting gallery competition. Ah, oh, that, that's right. So I guess I'm gonna end up dead last? In the end, after my dramatic victory, Rika-chan was the last challenger, but there weren't many targets left. The ones remaining were all tiny and difficult to hit. She did take her time and aim, but all three shots completely missed. She was to end up sharing the loser's crown with Tomitaki-san. However, she did her little mewing cry in front of the owner, and he turned to mush instantly. She was given a pack of gum as a consolation cry prize. Her methods were a bit audacious, but she did avoid being the loser rather magnificently. Come to think of, come to think of it, Rika-chan is quite the trickster. I have no idea what Keiichi Tan is talking about. Now then, it's decided that Tomitaki-san is dead last. Everyone cheered and applauded. Tomitaki-san smiled wryly, slightly bewildered. So, Tomitaki-san, are you ready? Penalty time! Huh? Oh, I completely forgot about that. You're too naive, Tomitaki-san. That's why your club can never lose. Mian pulled a felt-tip marker from her pocket. Oh, it's like that. Show him some mercy, Mion. At least he was a washable marker. A permanent one is too harsh. <laughs> it just has to be permanent. It comes off when you do the laundry anyway. Whoa, 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 what is this? Please take it easy on me. All of us pinned his arms behind his back, and Mion approached him with the marker in one hand. And squip, squip, squip. 
but she didn't write on Tomitaki-san's face. She wrote on the shirt he was wearing. You'd better have your big break this year from me on. Reyna took up the marker next. Show me some photos next time, okay? From Reyna. It was a little heartwarming, and I just had to laugh. But you're writing black on black? Haha, <laughs> this is more like a farewell... <laughs> this is more like a farewell card than a penalty. Ho <laughs> I'm not as soft as the rest. I'll make sure this is a proper penalty. Haha, <laughs> dead last from Satoko. Try harder next time from Rika. Here you go, Keiichi-san. I couldn't decide what to write, but based on what kind of penalty this was, this was probably the most appropriate. Come back and play again from Keiichi. That's a flag. Tomitaki-san was silent the entire time. At first he was quite bewildered, but now he had a different look on his face. So I have to wear this all the way back to Tokyo as part of the penalty? Of course, you better wear it all the way home. Uh -huh. You can wear it when you come back. It would be nice. He appeared deeply moved. Embarrassment mixed with a wealth of other emotions made him turn bright red. <laughs> Understood. I'll wear this next time I come here. I promise. Everyone cheered and applauded. It was the finest parting gift possible for a buddy heading out tonight. He's gonna die. He is not making it out of here. Rip in pieces, Tomitaki-san. I saw the woman who was with Tomitaki-san standing near the, for the festival grounds. It seemed Tomitaki-san noticed her too and knew it was time to leave. Seems like your guest is waiting. Isn't it about time? Hmm. Yeah, that's certainly how it seems, haha. <laughs> Tomitaki-san headed off towards her and seemed to apologize for making her wait. We all shouted stuff at Tomitaki-san. Each time we did, he looked back and waved his hand. Eventually, he faded in the darkness of the night, out of sight. Rip. It was quite the casual farewell. This wasn't the first time any of us had seen someone off. We had done the same thing many times before. He's gone. Well, it's about time we take off, too. Rikichan had to, had to stay behind with the other committee members since they were having a meeting. Satoko was tugging along with her. I headed back home with the usual suspects. The walk back was quite lively with Shock of the Day's War Stories. Should have done this, should have done that, that kind of stuff. Ray and I parted ways with Mion, and then it was just the two of us. Then we got to my house and I parted ways with Rena as well. It's already pretty late, are you alright by yourself? Yeah, I'm perfectly fine. It's close, I'm going to run too. If you run into some weirdo, just yell. If someone does come, will you come and save me? Maybe? Maybe? If I hear you. How? Okay. I'll scream loud enough so you can hear me. Merrily spinning her arms around at high speed, Rena dashed off. She was fine. In that mode, not even an adult could stand against her. Rena's cheerful presence disappeared and it finally became quiet again. A curse that not a single person ever whispered about. The more I learned about it tonight, the more unsettling it became. It didn't show on any of their faces, but they were probably all quite concerned about it as well. If nothing happens tonight, then it all ends up being just crazy talk. Nothing will happen. Nothing bad. Nothing at all. What's wrong, Keiichi? Why are you staring in a place like that? Come inside, you'll catch a cold. It was my mom. Did you go, Mom? To the Watanagashi Festival? In the end, your father didn't wake up. 
So I missed it. Our dad is dead. No. A little disappointing. Mom stuck her tongue out with a bit of an embarrassed look on her face. Teje pero. Well, partner, I think uh, we got to call it here. Although there's probably more tips. Did we unlock tips? You ever receive new tips? Oh god, there's four of them. Okay, well, after we read the tips. Oh boy, alright. Gonna end on some spooks. The true Halloween spirit. From the June 1980 edition. On the afternoon of XX at 2 p.m., office employees so and so and his wife, such and such, of Hinamizawa Village in Shishibone Prefecture. Hello? Disappeared after falling 27 meters from the observatory platform in Shirakawa Prefecture. Police and firefighters searched downstream and discovered the body of XXX at around 7 p.m. that evening. His wife, such and such, has yet to be found. The search has run into difficulties due to the effects of Typhoon 3 from, pre from the previous day. It appeared a railing at the observatory that the X's leaned on had broken, causing him to fall. The grounds keeping staff was questioned by the police in regards to facility deterioration and if park maintenance was was performed properly. Oh, okay. These are the short ones. From the June 1981 edition. On the afternoon of XX around 10 p.m. in the X district of Hinamizawa village in Shishibone prefecture, the Shinto priests of the Furude shrine passed away after an existing condition he was recovering from suddenly worsened. Parties close to the deceased said he was suffering from anxiety issues concerning the festival, which was to be held that day. Also, after so-and-so's death, his wife, so-and-so, went missing, leaving behind a farewell note. The police and local youth association continued the search. However, given the presence of the farewell message and the fact that the on Onigafuchi Marsh is said to be bottomless, they've run into difficulties. It wasn't reported in the newspaper. The housewife murder? This is Okino Mia Station calling Unit 3. <clears throat> this is Okino Mia Station calling Unit 3. Unit 3, please respond. This is Unit 3. Loud and clear. Back up to send your way. Hold position until further instructions. Over. Rather, Unit 3 acknowledged. Requesting no headlights. Requesting radio silence. Station, the doctor has arrived. They want to carry it away. What's the order? Over. Acknowledged. Leave it to the doctor. Affirmative. Understood. Ah. Backup has arrived. Shouldn't we let them take a photo first? I think the Vic is done for. What? What in the jolly blue blazes? Alright, well that's up to day six. Chapter six. Alright. Well, thanks so much for watching. Um, tomorrow will be uh, Dead by Daylight and Phasmophobia. I've never played Dead by Daylight before, so it should be fun. Um, yeah. 
All right. I'm glad we got to a point where the, the, the creepy, like, actually was setting in, you know? Yeah. Given that I'm playing for the creepy, the, the lighthearted scenes do get a little bit annoying. Um, I just wish they were a little shorter, I guess. But yeah. I'm enjoying it so far, though. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to finish Chapter 1 uh, by the end of next stream, but I will definitely finish Chapter 1 um, in November. Um, and then I have no, no promises on any later chapters after 1. Um, I'll, I'll probably get around to them someday, but, yeah. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Thanks for stuff and things. Uh, until next time. Wait, wait, wait. Gotta be in season. Until next time, my peeps. Fair it out. <laughs> Eh?